make your presence known in an unusual way tonight let the saints be equipped let the church be mature let mighty men and women of God arise O God from this place reveal your glory multifaceted dimensions and cause our hearts to be enlightened let your word break every stronghold tonight let the sick be healed and let the oppressed be delivered let our destinies change forever in the name of Jesus It's in your glory I will stand I will stand And lift my hand It's in your glory I'll receive Every miracle you have for me it's in this glory we will stand we will stand and lift our hands it's in your glory we'll receive every you have and the balaka brandos he who has the sun has eternal life we have the sun so we have eternal life we have the sun, so we have eternal life. We who have the sun, we have eternal life. I have the sun, so I have eternal life. Bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, and I forget not your benefit. I bless your holy name, sing your praises forever, I forget not. Lord, we cry for a visitation. We do not want to be so familiar with your presence. We cry for a fresh Mighty one, we cry. We cry, Abba Father, hallowed be Hallowed be your name. Hallowed Hallowed be your name. 
Jesus, we declare that you are the lifter of our heads. Everything that you have done in this place, we give you the glory for it. For the miracles, the healings, the signs, the wonders. No man can do these things except God be with him. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. Without your presence, there is nothing we have. Without your presence, we have no message. Your presence is a life-transforming factor. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Prevail over us tonight, O oh God. We submit our spirits and our destinies. Let the refiner's fire build us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk up to two or three people. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a blessing. You cannot imagine how excited I am every week to bring us the word of the Lord. And you see,
as a man of God, your responsibility is not to be celebrated or to build an empire for yourself. As a true minister of the gospel, your primary responsibility is to be an extension of the power, the life, and the glory of God. Let's look at a scripture. Jeremiah 23. Verse 4. Jeremiah 23. Verse 4. It says, And I will set up shepherds over them who shall feed them and they shall fear no more nor be dismayed neither shall they be lacking saith the Lord he says and I will set up shepherds over them and the primary assignment of those shepherds will be to feed them so that they no more fear they no longer are in dismay and that they neither be lacking saith the Lord and so when God anoints a man, a minister of the gospel you are a servant to the people and your responsibility is to bring the fresh manna from heaven. Not just any revelation you read around, but fresh manna from heaven that is capable of building, changing, empowering the people. See, our ministration in the New Testament is that of the Spirit. Meaning, when you listen to a man who is ministering by the anointing, you are receiving more than information. Is that true? There is an activity is a transfer this is the most powerful part of the ministration of the word that while you are sitting right now listening to me there is a spiritual transfer something is entering your spirit ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 it says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet let me tell you something without the ministration of the spirit every other thing we are doing is just noise it is the ability to convey spiritual realities not just the english not just the grammar are you getting my point now but there is an impartation upon your spirit man and that impartation is what engraces you to walk in the reality of what you are taught without the spirit backing the word there is no supply of grace to become it says as many as believed in him even to them that believe on his name, he gave them what? Power to become. Not power to hear. Power to become. Meaning that when the word of God is taught in truth, it should not only bless you in terms of making you feel good. It should activate something in your spirit and make you become it. Because the word of God is not a thing. The Greek word, word is logos. Right? And Jesus, the word is called the living logos. Is a person you can listen to my message the living logos meaning the ultimate desire of God is not for you to learn scripture the ultimate desire is that through the instrumentality of scripture light will enter you to become an epistle yourself a written epistle the apostle says hallelujah so this is what we are here to do tonight and I trust that the Lord will bless our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll share with us a few thoughts that the Lord put in my heart. And I trust that God will help us. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. One of the most tragic things that has happened to the body of Christ, especially pastors, preachers, is that we have lost the spirit of the word and i say this with a very heavy heart there's so much of talking going on 
Sunday after Sunday talking. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I'm not against the theological understanding of the word. I'm not against the intellectual comprehension of the word. But if all we have to give people is just information, just rema in terms of new discoveries, we will never be able to produce a victorious army. Hallelujah. It doesn't take being spiritual to have information. It just takes being passionate. You don't have to be spiritual. You don't have to wait on God to get spiritual information. You see, the distinguishing factor, let me tell you something. Many people think it's just the new information that produces transformation in people's lives. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. There is a spirit that is behind scripture. One time the Lord opened my eyes. And when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in a vision and I saw a big, like an ancient door or a gate if I will call it. And when I looked closely, I found out that that gate was made of many smaller doors. Actually a door. Many smaller doors. Are you following me now? And on every one of those doors, a scripture was written. I saw the doors opening and closing. Meaning behind the letter, behind the grammar, behind the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, there is a spirit waiting to transform people. The assignment, the ministration of that spirit is the spirit of life. The spirit of life. Not just the spirit of truth. The spirit of life. He gives life to the information you are hearing. And then you are empowered to walk in its reality here and now. So there is a lot of church going on. There is a lot of conferences and activities and meetings. But what we have done primarily as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is to reduce the ministration of the word to become an intellectual thing. So it's just about theological dissertations or Greek and Hebrew. Somehow we have convinced ourselves that the more we read Greek and Hebrew and express, you know, the words in Greek and Hebrew and bring new words, we think that the anointing is in the Greek or the anointing is in the Hebrew or the anointing is in the English or the communication. There is a spirit. There is a spirit. That's the reason why you can hear a very powerful message and not be changed. There is a spirit. Listen, as I'm talking to you right now, there is a spirit that is compelling what I'm saying to enter you so that you are persuaded. That's why you can bring somebody that is hardened, somebody that will even swear that I won't listen to God, I won't do anything. And when he sits down under this anointing, from the prayer to the worship, there is a spirit. There is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It is that spirit that makes the person just keep quiet later on. And all of a sudden, you are seeing somebody that you know was stubborn. Probably even insulting the meeting. And yet he's silent. And then paying attention. Listen. I want to convince you that without the ministration of the spirit, everything we are doing in ministry is useless. Get this. Get this get this there is a wrong wrong understanding about impact and transformation many people wonder why you go to certain christian circles and there is hardly any change for 10 years people can be in a church but there is no notable transformation the only thing is that they know the names of everybody and while it's good to teach people things like um you know accounting timekeeping other secular principles here and there there is nothing in life that will replace the ministration of the spirit not just being full of the holy ghost not just receiving the anointing the ministration of the spirit the participation that at every point in your dispensing of the word there is a light there is a life that's the only way your words can transform people let me tell you something i am always aware that it's a privilege
for God's people to be gathered here week in, week out. Some persons have traveled from different states, different regions to be here. You cannot just come all the way to just come and listen to a, a presentation of Bible or just a religious Bible study. It's more than that. That is the reason why, let me tell you something. It's good to listen to tapes. It's good to read books. But none of them can replace being in an atmosphere. There is something about the atmosphere. Are you getting what I'm saying? An atmosphere activates a lot of things. There is something about you sitting down. From the first time you come in and sit down, even before the service starts proper, there is already the ministration of, of the Spirit going on. Convictions are changing. Ideologies are shifting. Death is being replaced by life. The earthly is becoming the heavenly. Right? That revelation, listen, let me tell you. I've said it again and let me just use this opportunity to stress. I absolutely believe that before Jesus comes, you see, we've taught on the concept of immortality. There's been a number of preachers who have brought that concept in the body of Christ. But what we have not taught people, it is a scriptural concept. The Bible tells us death can be swallowed up in victory. That the mortal can become the immortal. That the natural, the terrestrial can translate. There is a provision in the kingdom that allows the natural to become divine. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That divine dimension, brothers and sisters, is what we are called to demonstrate. A believer must understand that there is nothing natural about you. If you are not convinced about what I'm telling you, you will never be able to do great things for the kingdom. I know that here and there because of our humanity, the attachment of this body, somehow we tend to trivialize and we think that the activities of the kingdom must be done sensually and so we preach sensually we carry out all that we do sensually but there is a spirit there is a spirit that is the one factor that makes ministry different from business or makes ministry different from a, a seminar right that's the difference we have lost this spirit in crusades we have lost this spirit in conferences and you see that people sit down and they never live with that transformation can i tell you something the ministration of the spirit is not just about understanding a topic it's about the presence of god changing you meaning if we come here and all we do is to sing you should still live transformed because you see the the concept of transformation is not just about hearing words alone when you are sitting in an atmosphere something begins to happen at once your convictions there is a shift there is an alignment that makes you and postures you to begin to receive of spiritual things first john chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the record or this is the testimony that god has given unto us what eternal life the word here is zoe i know we talk a lot about it eternal life is not life after death listen listen eternal life is not life it's not the life you receive after death right what happens after death is the consummation the consummation right eternal life is the divine life god's own kind of life being supplanted in a human spirit and finding expression here and now in the earth realm and the quality of that life if it is of god it should be able to conquer anything in this life including death but it is the ministration of that life that many people do not understand so we in, in the kingdom let me read the, the scripture let me not go ahead of myself it says and this is the record that god has given unto us what 
so it is clear from scripture that it has been given but how is the technology of that life transferred it says and this life is where it's in his son next verse it says he that had the son had that life and he that had not the son of god had not life watch this the bible tells us listen my goodness the primary purpose of receiving jesus that means you're coming to christ or you're coming accepting the lordship of christ in itself is not even the end it is the spiritual system with which the life of god gets to you the bible says the life of god is hidden in the christ himself right the son of god so the way you receive that life is to receive the son of god that's why we preach that's why souls must be won. So it's, it's not just trying to save people from going to hell alone. It's the spiritual system with which the divine life gets to them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. Because if all that there was to being born again was going to heaven, you would have left immediately you gave your life to Christ. So the technology is, of course, it secures your eternal destiny. But the Bible says God gave us life. But that life is hidden in the son himself so that until you receive the son you cannot have life meaning you can be in church for years are you getting what i'm saying be around christian people for years but if you have not received the son it's impossible for you to have that life there are all kinds of life you can have your biological life you can have an occultic life sponsored by the agency of another spirit but if you are to have the very life of God, Zoe, God's quality and class of life, you must embrace his son. Embracing the father will not give you that life. Hear me? Embracing an angel will not give you that life. Embracing revelation will not give you that life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must know what ministers that life. It says, and the life the office of the son of god jesus christ is the only means through which that life can be communicated how many people are in church they've been in church for years but they do not have this life of god because they have not embraced they are aware that the son of god exists are you getting what i'm saying they are aware that he died but they have not received of his life and the bible tells us that you receive now the question is what exactly is that eternal life what is eternal life really what is eternal life is it is it um is it a package that is given to us is it an inanimate thing that is just put in us is it a programming what exactly is eternal life i'll tell you eternal life is the presence of the eternal spirit of god in a man that's exactly what eternal life is eternal life is not a thing you are giving when you give your heart to jesus eternal life is the very entrance of the spirit of the living god to come and reside in you the extension as we call it in the greek alos paracletos the one who has come to be a representation of the ministry of jesus here and now in your life so my mortal body that if i come to jesus christ and i truly receive his son that life the only gate that's why jesus said i am the way not a way i am the way right so the spirit of life the very holy spirit can only find expression when you embrace the son this scripture is a clarification or an explanation of Galatians chapter 3 right when you begin to read from verse 13 down the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law it says be made a cause for us look at me let me explain something to you do you know what makes the Old Testament old look up look up look up let me explain something to you do you know what makes the Old Testament old or when the bible talks of the old man he's talking about any entity that does not have the life-giving spirit 
is obsolete the spiritual language is old are you getting the point so it's not old because of time i don't know if you understand what i'm saying you know in the earth if if we bought this two years ago we say this is old this is new in the spirit old is only compared to its quality with respect to the presence of the holy spirit that means an ideology is old to the degree to which the holy spirit is not involved in it again the reason why we call the ordinances of the past is not just because a new one has come if the new one came and the holy spirit is not in it it will still be old are you getting what i'm saying now so what makes a thing fresh or new is not that it is happening for the first time it is the very presence the eternal life of god that seed that conquers death that conquers weakness and the bible so designed the body of christ watch this the body of christ is supposed to be the vehicle that hosts the holy spirit that's why the bible says for this cause because people cannot discern the mystery some are weak some are sick and some do sleep is that not in your bible he said there is a mystery of the body the mystery of godliness the bible calls it that christ can dwell in a mortal body he said if you do not discern it you will be weak you will be sick and you can even sleep meaning that immortality is only a possibility because of the presence of the eternal spirit of god but the 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 factor is this um in the kingdom there are two realities i want you to write this down what i'm teaching you tonight is powerful you will walk in the glory of god in supernatural dimensions if you understand what i'm saying there are two realities that every believer contends with or walks with number one is the reality in christ the reality in christ the beginning of the experience of the believer in the new testament starts in christ outside of christ there is no initiation into the realities of the new testament right the 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 whole new testament starts the pivot on which our ministration of life is built upon is in christ in christ in christ in christ never alone for with god all things are possible outside of him many things are not possible for in christ we are complete for in christ we are perfected are you getting the point now but then there are realities in christ for instance we are seated in heavenly places the bible tells us in christ the other reality is the experience of that truth here and now the experience of that truth here and now you can call it the reality in christ and then the experiential reality the bible tells us all through the new testament all that we have become in christ many times we do not understand why apostle paul when he makes certain statements about the believer he adds in christ and then we do not understand his communications some of us have been taught and maybe some of us sincerely misled that the moment it has happened in christ it means that the the experience of it is manifest here and now that's not true paul himself speaking to the hebrew church in chapter 2 begins to clarify right and he tells us certain things he tells us we do not yet see all things Let, let's turn there paul gives us a contrast that will help us in our spiritual growth hebrews are you blessed tonight i have the sun and i have eternal life he who has the son has eternal life two verse 
7 and 8. Let's look at 7 and 8. Hebrews 2, verse 7 and 8. He says, Thou hast made him. Remember, Paul was quoting from David. It was David, the son of Jesse, right? The king who by revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom wrote this. He said, To none of the angels, right? Has he said at any point, Thou art my son, you know, this and that. He did not put the world in subjection to any angel. And then the Bible says, Talking about man now, he said, You have made him, or in. in, in uh, talking about jesus now in his earthly work he says you have made him a little lower than the angels the word there was mistranslated it's supposed to be uh angelio not necessarily like the beings but it's an expression of god himself many times you see the bible use the word angel to mean the very lord himself is that not true many times in scripture you will see that at certain times the word angel is written in italics meaning that there is more explanation to it it doesn't mean an angel like a messenger from the presence of the lord but god himself so it says the word there is supposed to be thou hast made him a little lower than eloha god himself the almighty so jesus lowered in rank for the purpose of coming to become a man in the earth right he says thou hast crowned him now he's talking about his coronation this was the coronation that david saw the lord said to my lord right sit thou at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool so he says it here that thou crownest him with what glory and honor and you did set him over the works of your hand verse 8 thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing. That it, Listen, I hope you realize that in the New Testament, you are not anything until Christ is first it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So every time you see the Bible talking about man, find out whether Christ has become that thing. If Christ has not become it, because he must be the firstborn in all things. Meaning the dimension that the Christ did not show us a possibility of getting there is no point trying to get there this is what i'm saying are you getting the point we can contend even more than the earth work of jesus because he said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes in me is that not in your bible the works that i do in other words he said my eternal life is not compressed to four gospels if i stayed longer i would have unveiled more possibilities now if you have my life I authorize you to keep exploring the possibilities and immortality is one of the possibilities in that life divine health is one of the possibilities in that life the ability to live supernatural though natural is one of the possibilities we must be able to stretch the possibilities what are the contents of this Zoe life what does it consist of what are the benefits why should I want to receive the life of God is like a product you are marketing to me convince me why should I want it what is the excellency of God's life over my natural life are you getting what I'm saying so the Bible tells us speaking about man but that man was not just man like you that man was first the man Christ are you getting what I'm saying now I know that when you read this scripture he says who is man that thou art mindful of him that man is not just talking about the natural man he's first talking about the firstborn and all he has called into glory because he died as the only begotten son then he resurrected as the first of the begotten and from there he had 120 other begotten sons and from there there are many begotten sons so jesus is no longer the only begotten son of the father by the spirit of adoption we have come into that sonship too are you are you understanding what i'm teaching you and so the bible tells us that when you receive of that son you receive of that life that life is like a drug the presence of the holy spirit the moment he finds expression certain reactions begin to happen watch this he opens you up to the realities so jesus in the new testament becomes what we call our pattern man 
Jesus came and walked for three and a half years to show us an example of what the Zoe life is. Are you getting it? He was the first that opened us up to the possibility of the Zoe life. So when we saw the things that he did, we saw the mighty things that he did. The first that had the spirit without measure and he did so many things. And then he told us that uh -uh, it is profitable for you that I go. For if I do not go, I cannot send the comforter. He will come and continue. He will be an extension of my ministry. The Holy Spirit is to us today what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. Exactly what Jesus was to the 12 disciples, the Holy Spirit is to us today. That's the reason why there are no three thrones in heaven. There are only two thrones in heaven. But we agree that there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because the third throne is in us. There is a marriage that has been done never to be separated again. Are you, are you getting that now? It is Him that takes us to the God class. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Are we, are we understanding what I'm teaching tonight? So the reality is in Christ and then our experience of that reality. The Bible says something very powerful here. It said, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, right? For in that he put all things under his feet, he left nothing that is not under him. At what point did this happen to man? Jesus himself said this. When he resurrected, what did he say? He said, all hail, he told the disciples. He says, all authority, exousia, delegated power has been given to me. When he was in the earth, all authority, let me say something that looks controversial. When he was in the earth, all authority and power over all the earth was not given to him. I hope you know. Absolutely. That's the reason why when he was sending the disciples with his power, he told them it will only work when you go to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that jurisdiction. Is it not in your Bible? So when Jesus resurrected, he now said, now, the scope, a coronation has happened to me. Right? The same way it happened to Adam, that dominion mandate has been restored. And he said, now, all authority has been given it says go in that light in other words in christ the bible says that we've been made to sit with him above all thrones and dominions and power and every name that is named both in this life and in the life to come that's what the apostle was trying to explain there but he leaves a disclaimer he says but now everybody say but now are you seeing in christ all things have been perfected but now the experience of that reality it says but now we see not what is Paul saying now Paul you just told us now that in Christ all things are finished is that not true when Jesus hung on the cross he said it is finished look at this the thieves that were on the cross one was telling him ah paraphrasing now we saw you do a lot of miracles. Is it that you can't bring us down from the cross? Another person was saying, when you get there. So they were all thinking of a lot of things. But Jesus said today, he was giving him a revelation that in Christ, there is an experience. So in Christ, you are healed. In Christ, you are prosperous. Is that true? In Christ, you are free from every yoke and every curse and everything. But then translating that experience... It does not just profit you in Christ gives you access but it does not make it a reality that you can handle now there is a system with which you can take that which is in Christ and make it happen here and now I hope you know that a man on a wheelchair the price for his healing has been paid why is he still on the wheelchair I don't know if you understand what I'm saying every sinner in hell today from the time jesus came the price for their salvation has been paid why are they in hell as merciful as the mercy of jesus is are you getting the point now so there is a difference between realities in christ 
and the experience the realities in christ give us a window to the things we can claim and the possibilities that are there on account of the zoe life that we have but that does not mean because you saw it in christ automatically it will find expression here and now i don't know if you understand what i'm saying so you can read in scripture that by his stripes i am healed but here and now you do not see that perfected in your life right you've seen that we've been redeemed from every curse of the law and all the ordinances the, the handwritings and the and all the things that have spoken against us they've been nailed to the cross but you are watching right there at 25 there was a miscarriage your younger sister at 25 there was a miscarriage obviously a demonic pattern finding expression so did god lie no it's just that we have not been taught the system of making the realities in christ to become our reality is god speaking to us now so most believers just see oh in christ and then this is how they respond god forbid i have seen it in the bible i will never be sick i will never be broke and then you are getting broke you are getting sick because what you saw is not a lie but the ability to translate it here and now have many people not read that this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what how many people are casting out devils how many do you know in my name they will speak with new tongues how many innocent believers do you know have struggled for years praying and fasting for the baptism of the holy spirit and seemingly it did not come how many times have you walked to a sick body with every confidence the bible says heal the sick right raise the dead cast out devils it says freely you have received freely give in christ in Christ in Christ how do we make that experience here and now because if we do not learn this eventually we are going to hate God because we we'll think he's a liar a deceiver I'm very concerned, let me tell you sincerely, at how distant we are from the things we talk about, the things we claim, and the experience of the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is too much talk in the body of Christ. We must humble ourselves and admit that there are certain things we do not yet understand because there is too much talk about who god is what he can do we make such bold statements about god but when it comes to bringing god in the scene bringing his power here and now we begin to find theological explanations to excuse ourselves the bible says for instance jesus christ the same when today and forever how many preachers do you know have said that how many of us men of God have said that? How many of us have been able to reproduce that reality? We must admit that there is something we are not understanding. We must admit that there is a dimension of spiritual reality we are missing. And let me tell you where we are missing it. This is it. Romans chapter 8. Let me tell you where we are missing it very seriously. And if we do not change, a lot is going to go wrong. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. In fact, let's start. Okay, verse 5. Everyone read. It says, For they that are after the flesh do what? Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit. The things of the spirit. Verse 6. For to be what? Stop. The word carnal there is the word sensual. It's not supposed to be. It's not a bad word. In terms of carnal doesn't mean immoral. 
or maybe in a negative sense it just means that when you are carnal the limitation the scope of your judgment and your assessment of spiritual things is either intellectual scientific or sensual that's the limitation that's the circumference it says to be carnally minded whoever lives his life from that standpoint that your perspective about life is just how one plus one will become two it must be logical it must be scientific the bible says any man that thinks like that is already dying think about that it says for to be carnally minded is what death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so a man can watch oppression in his life and say no i went to school what what sort of oppression i mean if if you fail you fail it's not any demon anything you see that and then he does not know that the whole world lies in wickedness that all that you see is not all that there is there are many people for instance who look up and say there is no god because they are carnally minded they they reason from the sensual realm let me tell you the church of the lord jesus christ in a bit and i teach you principles we just finished having financial principles but in a bid to break life down into an understandable format we are gradually coming down from that height of spirituality to reduce god into a carnal mathematical formula so there is a there is a mathematics that is responsible for healing there is a mathematics that is responsible for a and b and c and then we throw the holy spirit out and gather those informations and feel on the strength of these informations i can make it yet the bible says all scripture was inspired was written right by the inspiration of who the holy ghost the very spirit of life the spirit of truth the one that was sent to make the reality of this divine life true in us we have thrown him away and we have reduced everything if you cannot explain it like mathematics i don't believe i don't understand i throw it away it's gradually destroying us even our presentation of the gospel we are seeking to make sinners as though the gospel is not supernatural we try to beat it down and make it as mathematical as possible whereas the Bible tells us that as you are speaking to people, the law of the spirit of life is supplanting the law of sin and death. How do you explain that mathematically? So there are people carrying all kinds of demonic substances and all medicine can tell you is, this is this, this is that. You see, it happens at times. There are women who based on the way they are formed, they don't have wombs. You just happen to be one of them. God is faithful and all of that and then you sit down and believe that that's how it is the Bible says to be carnally minded let me tell you the truth if we do not grow I'm not against intellectualism right there's always that saying that you should not be so heavenly minded that you are of no earthly relevance um, that is true but if you are truly spiritually minded you cannot be irrelevant to the earth are you getting what i'm saying see i read books I, I have studied a lot of people there is no man who works based on the truth of this scripture that will be irrelevant in this life this is the dispensation of spiritual men we have left dispensation of physical strength of giants we are we are gradually leaving the dispensation of intellectualism there are too many questions medicine cannot answer our governments are failing flawlessly because there is a principality that can sit down over a region and they try policies after policies here comes the generation of the spiritual men those who can tell the government you have done all you know to do can you finally pay attention to us those who changed the world in the bible were not just foolish people just intellectualizing everything these were men daniel daniel for instance he understood that persia there was a spiritual host of wickedness around that territory and he knew the key 
to sustaining a smooth flow of that government was prayer the moment he prayed the spirits of the medes and the persians were disturbed and they use individuals to pass a government policy don't pray just for 30 days can you imagine just 30 days of no prayer and we will wreck babylon and the king passed it and daniel said no i'm a spiritual man i'm not just i, I know i'm intelligent i'm a government representative but i remember the prayer of my fathers I, 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 are you getting the point i remember the temple of solomon it was solomon while dedicating the temple part of his request he said lord whoever faces this temple and prays hearken to them and he opened his window towards jerusalem he said i know i'm intellectual but i'm not so stupid i know the mystery that brought me to this palace because i came as a captive there was a mystery beyond mathematics that brought me here and then they caught him i can imagine other people saying well you claim everything is god 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 now let god save you and the lions were roaring brothers and sisters that was physical the lion is a fierce beast but there was going to be a playing of the spiritual the superiority the excellency of the spiritual as soon as he stepped in an angel came said daniel so you have not forgotten you have not forgotten where you come from how many of us have forgotten you see that there are so many people talk about god right now they become irritated if you talk in church it's okay but you talk about god outside to people they just say Kai, i beg jare we are talking business you are trying to scatter everything as though god is the reason why all things will not work let me tell you if you ignore god in any aspect of your life get set for a shock because the realm of the spirit is still alive and strong how many ladies think they will marry because they are fine they get up around they don't pray they don't listen they say god forbid yeah, i know that i know what god gave me be celebrating there until you find out that you are 45 years and as pretty as you are because there there are realities in the spirit my brothers and sisters there are realities i got a testimony from i got a testimony from um administration we went for in kaduna that 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 blessed me one of the pastors um came over to my place yesterday and he was telling me when I went for the meeting, a woman was pregnant. Brothers and sisters, watch this. At least biology tells us, I'm not a doctor. There are doctors here. Um, so how the child is supposed to be formed. Eventually, for reasons they cannot explain, the child started turning mysteriously. No, the child does not turn mysteriously. Something turned it. Let me tell you, the oldest man in the earth is not up to 120. There are spirits that are millions of years. You call Satan a liar, you are right. You call him a deceiver, you are right. You call him a fool, you are very wrong. Satan is old. Are you hearing that? Absolutely. You know, sometimes the way people just talk, me, God forbid, my spirit can do this and that and that. It's not all about this. It's not, and, and while you are talking, the realm of the spirit is just watching you. How old? Do you know in Bible days, all of us are not even up to teenagers right now? Right? yet the ancient spirit of god gives us a prescription about how to live and he says if you want life and peace be spiritually minded be spiritually minded do not let education do not let intellectualism money or anything take away that spiritual factor it has nothing to do with a man of god it is the key to life and peace we have thrown the holy spirit we feel he's only relevant in church right so when you go to your job and all of that people say now let's 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 be real let's be real while this the bible says i am the truth i am reality when god began to build and train me god made it a necessity and he let me know that forever in my earth work the holy spirit will be and will remain the mystery behind any impact any transformation 
you see that for me the spirit of the living god is not just one nuisance that you have to embrace so that god will like you he is what you call eternal life if you are not aware of that be aware eternal life is not what he brings his very presence is the life of god jesus never became the christ he was the son of the carpenter he could die that's why his parents ran away with him but when the spirit of god came he made him the christ so when the bible says in christ it's not just saying in jesus alone in jesus yes but together with the spirit of life look at what we have taught people about faith today look at the, the nonsense that goes on in the body of christ that we call faith right we teach people all kinds of experiences as if it's voodoo that's why it's not working let me tell you faith is a product of an encounter when the bible says faith comes by hearing do you hear what you read answer me you see we need to examine he was talking it was a spiritual language he was not even just talking about hearing with the ear there is a quality of spiritual perception that an encounter brings and that's what produces true faith because when the bible says hearing and hearing by the word at that time there was no books like this king james had not authorized this so what did they call the word the days that are coming will be fierce the days that are coming will be spiritual right now have you seen the way the world is going lately there is no embarrassment about spirituality again is that true everybody is opening up it used to be in secrecy before but right now there is an open confrontation it's like everybody is saying kai i'm not hiding it again i'm gay simple kill me if you will kill me up it's not today it has been like that another person is saying it's not only you two or four too another person is saying let me tell you i've not been a real christian this is my charm oh yeah you see everybody is confessing one by one one by one the meaning of that is darkness is about to reveal itself publicly right and it will bring everyone in a position to sustain a spiritual system to be higher than it or become a victim someone is building a house with blocks and cement when you are about to complete it and give thanksgiving the next week one small wind will just shake and you will come and not even see the two course of blocks it will scatter everything what sort of wind is that is it now wind started how many hurricanes are on right now and scientists say they watch from space that before the hurricanes comes they see images of spirits doing things from the sea minutes later you see all the animals running they are still spiritual except human beings disaster hardly meets animals there they run away and leave us we are there trying to make money we are dead and we are dying like chickens this is a spiritual generation listen this is a generation where it's no longer the issue of are you a pastor or not to be serious to be spiritually minded the holy spirit is the advantage of this generation i am convinced that we are the generation that will return christ yes i am convinced the bible specifically talks about a number of things that as we call it that omega generation there are certain happenings that will characterize our generation hallelujah that we discern spiritual things let me give you an instance hold on let me explain something how many people in church today have thrown away the sacredness of being a man of god and the fivefold ministry in an attempt to balance these bossy things men of god do on stage right there are so many people who now challenge their pastors challenge everybody are you the only one who will preach 
are you the only one we have a democratic church that can vote out throw out pastors because of policies have you read in first samuel i can't remember i think maybe chapter 15 or 13 one time when saul is that true when samuel told saul that they should go and have a solemn assembly is that true he was coming to make a sacrifice they gathered the people it's in your bible and then saul told the, i mean samuel said he's coming at so and so time and he didn't come and they waited for him they waited for him they waited for him after they waited for him people were scattering and the ego of the king saul was was at stake and he said kai this guy is not coming let me what offer the bond offering as soon as he offered the bond offering samuel came and he said well uh i'm, I'm sorry honestly i was afraid it's not like i wanted i mean too i didn't want to do it the people were disturbing me and since you were not around i thought since i was a king let me do it and samuel said you have done foolishly he said if you had allowed me to come god would have established your throne so it would have now be son of saul not son of david he said because you have done this the kingdom is taken to you for god has found another man after his heart just for violating the priesthood how many people violate the priesthood today and they don't care right all kinds of people any man can get up at any point lambast any man of god write any article and speak and believe he will go scot free go and read your bible it's because we have become carnally minded we don't even know what it means to be a man of god we think being a man of god is choosing the vocation of preaching right so that when one walk or the other doesn't work or maybe you read something that you felt is, is not lucrative you just say talk it's okay at least you are preaching you see this is our mindset so we do not we have thrown the sacredness that is in the altar there were times in the bible that when a priest and a prophet was not available to do certain things they left it there have you read about Uzzah in the bible i'm showing you how we have fallen from understanding spiritual standards the bible says we do not discern the body of christ and many people have received casualties because we do not know how the body was supposed to operate right remember that there was a time when the ark of god was being carried back and then he was about to fall and an innocent man called Uza, for his sincere love for god wanted to run and just block the ark what happened to him he died instantly have you read your bible when miriam and aaron looked at their brother and said kai see you you are our younger brother don't open eye for us here is it only you that god will speak to huh we were all born by this and that and moses didn't say anything what happened a cloud came at once miriam became as white as snow white as snow right and aaron aaron it was just because of the priesthood position that shielded him we have lost touch with spiritual mysteries because we want to do everything carnally when they tell a man that god is able to do a miracle for you and that in 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 five months god can open you to fountains of blessings you know they look around and say eh, i know it's not like i'm saying god cannot do it but you see we have to calculate how a will become b and how c will become d look at how people try to run ministry today right they try to run ministry in all kinds of funny ways look at how people try to generate finances for ministry when you see that you know that we have hopelessly lost touch with spiritual reality how did they build the tabernacle in the old testament because they were there for 40 years in the wilderness how did the supply come how did their clothes grow with them and their sandals today if we were before the red sea this is what apostle joshua selma would have done engineers where are you the spirit of bazalel and then we'll start constructing a bridge we're saying that if i'm a prophet in five years we'll cross this red sea see that that's how it would have worked that's how much we have reduced god that's exactly what we would have done 
and then the engineers come and we say okay let's start doing everything let's start architects come let's start and then where are the kingdom financiers and then prayer department where are and then we keep praying and god says is that all to me and then after five years we say now you will cross the bridge slowly and while we are crossing we'll be singing choruses and when we reach there i will put a menu a monument prophecy walked into motion by apostle joshua selman shame on us because we call that the old testament we laugh at them we even say they are a shadow of us are you joking read hebrews 11 there are men who in their humanity we cannot even touch their shoes yet this, that's the old testament we are very quick to say it's old we have done away with it but we have not done one tenth of the things that they have done it's in your bible people invoke angels to use hailstone and stone their enemies when was the last time you saw that when was the last time you saw angels pursuing boko haram with hailstones you are laughing it's a serious thing look at bomb blasts happening on around and there are men of god all around and we claim we're anointed they even put it on our posters when they invite us anointed man joshua selman shame on us let me tell you if this is what we think will bring christ back we are joking how many barren women have we been unable to solve their problems look at look at jesus jesus inspires me these guys who were with the guy that was crippled they knew that if they could only see jesus that situation would be over is it not in your bible and they said let's tear this man's ceiling we will explain it to him afterwards today we brag and compare ourselves with ourselves is that true and do a lot of carnal things there is almost no difference between what we do and the supernatural or and 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 and, and that of unbelievers if i stand right now and i minister to sam and he falls under the anointing people shamefully write an article and say he's using witchcraft where did we leave our spirituality is it not in your bible that jesus with the divine life walked through people on a cliff they were trying to kill him he walked through them like a spirit where is that generation I wanted to show us a video it's just that um we, we we didn't have it i didn't discuss with the media would have shown us that video um of patricia king right i know they don't have it they may not have it now otherwise you would have watched the video where oil was coming directly from heaven real oil physical oil you would have seen the foot of real angels that you are not pressing into god doesn't mean some other people are not The divine life we shout zoe we shout zoe but there is nothing zoe about our lives if they shoot me i die zoe right every ep every epidemic is in the society and it embraces me zoe now i don't say this in a derogatory way i'm saying this to challenge us i guarantee you if we learn how to receive that zoe life you will watch hivs get healed as if they do not exist it will no longer even be a prayer point the more i see people line up for counseling i don't rejoice to say wow it means i'm an anointed man i look at people line up for counseling and i bleed in my heart because i say shame on us it means we are doing very small a sign that we are doing so much is that the people in the church should be so impacted they should now go out and begin to transform people but today we say wow i had a crowd hundreds of people to to mean that ministry is moving forward wrong parameters because there is nothing spiritual that we can use to gauge our standard who is god speaking to tonight where have you reduced god let me tell you one day maybe i'll come in the night i'll bring a chair here one coin on here We'll just sit down and we'll discuss and i will share with you some of my encounters when god began to work with me some of you if i share it as you are seated now you've seen me every day you've even eaten with me but you will not believe it because you say it's a lie encounters with angels all kinds of spiritual encounters 
because I believe in him. I believe in him. I'll never forget the first time I had the audible voice of God. Let me tell you something. If you hear God, you must have faith. You see that? It's not about maybe I'm trying to calculate. You must have faith. Listen, at the, at the Mount of Transfiguration, when Elijah and Moses appeared, what did Peter do? Peter recognized them immediately. Had he ever seen them? Who told him? He said, what? I see three people. It's a privilege. That means I have questions to ask. Let's prepare three beds. One for Elijah, one for Moses, because he thought they came to pass the night with Jesus and discuss a lot of things. When an angel appeared to Mary, Mary was not afraid. Mary was a natural occurrence. It was the salutation she was afraid of, not the angel. Today, if somebody says, I seen an angel, say, I beg, Jerry, angel, where do you think angels are just like that? Yet the Bible says, are they not ministering spirits? I'm showing you why we have become carnal. We threw away the Holy Spirit. We are gradually kicking the Holy Spirit out in a bid to do what we call word, 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 word. Right? Word, word, word. Just the word. Give me the word and, and don't give me anything else. There are even people who reject Jesus and say, just give me Bible. Give me Bible, Jesus, go. Once it's not Bible, even Jesus should go away. And the devil likes that theology. If it is Bible you want, Zondavan, keep publishing. New versions keep coming out. And we keep carrying the Bible. And we convince ourselves that because we are holding Bible and reading it, we are growing in the world. But we are becoming carnal. That's why death is rampant. It is that carnality. Do you know that our forefathers were more spiritual than us? Is that true? Witchcraft in the village is not a shock. An average young boy in the village has seen some form of witchcraft. So if they tell him somebody can appear and disappear, he will believe it. But in the church, ah, if I disappear here now, now, in this place, finally the article will be complete. The article you have been writing, you will pay New Nigeria tomorrow morning to publish it. Confirm. Hey, which is on suit. Yet we talk about the mighty army that is rising up. Mighty army. Where is the army? Truly there is an army that is rising up. But let me tell you, our level of transformation is slow. We are hardly becoming like the Christ. There is, there is a standard that has been measured for us. And the greatest of us is just a step out of the cave. We must sustain a technology to hurry up and to catch up. The church call spiritual growth prosperity since every other spiritual thing like healing and the rest is very hard we have left it and then remedied it with money so when i come in with a nice suit and i come and say am i is the word not working let me tell you the truth if that's what you think you go to a meeting where you see people popping champagne of hundred thousand which which pastor or which christian can hardly do that in nigeria there are people lavishing resources we have reduced ourselves and match our spirituality so if i come out with a jeep if there are five jeeps that are lined up here you say man god is in koinonia what five jeeps is here oh. in bible days men were called generals on the strength of heavy capacity in the spirit one man will threaten a nation not a politician but Elijah, not in a radio station, he made a declaration to the heavens. He vetoed the prayer request of everybody and said, me, I speak, there will not be rain. Not God revealed to me. I stand in my office over this territory. And I said, there will not be rain. And he went to bed. It was by sorcery, Jezebel found out he was the one and she swore to remove his head. How many men of God have disgraced themselves on television? How many men of God have disgraced their ministries in newspapers? How many men of God predicted that 2012 is, is rapture? 
Huh? How many? You see, oh, we, we, we just showed the whole world that we have been lying for years. Instead of even keeping it quietly to now be pressing for forgiveness and transformation, we now went on air to publicly embarrass ourselves. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more. Today, people talk about the anointing, but they do not even know what the anointing is. No, at all. I tell you, many people do not even know what the anointing is. We have reduced God to prosperity. Because that's the only physical show of progress. Right? We have left the harder ones like healing and speaking over nations and forcefully bringing people to the cross. Those ones are very intricate. You can't fake those ones. So we have thrown them and then we ran to the easy ones. We make money and make two and two together and then we now say it's working. It's not working. No. We have to admit this thing and press into God. Part of my goals in life is to so align to the Holy Spirit that my life becomes a true expression of the divine life. I was told about one or two cases of some women here in this place who are here right now. Right? I think one of them is a miscarriage issue. I'll minister to her shortly. And then another person. The question is, if that happens in your church, what will you tell them? I know what you will tell them. I know what you will tell them. You don't have faith. If you have faith, you will provoke my oil. There's no problem with my own end. It's you that don't, you are liars. We are must be a generation that can present Christ to the world in his fullness. I truly believe I will be part of those people with all my heart. I desire to see the fullness of his glory find expression. I have received the son. And that means I believe that his life is in me. But where is that life? We are only seeing fragments of it fragments of it but there is a revival that is coming this will be a revival of the spirit himself when the spirit of god will start schooling people by ourselves because all the schools of ministry we have done and everything we have ended up making people just like us the spirit of god in these days the lord has started revealing this to me throughout last week i've been under an intense anointing right from when i finished the, the financial series and the holy ghost told me he will personally begin to teach people as many who are interested there will be such a move of the spirit i'm telling you god will begin to tutor people and the more you see him the more you will know preachers are lying the more you encounter him the more, the more you will know that people are sincere but liars the lord is revealing this to me this is how god trained me God taught me so many things. Secrets in the Bible. There are times that I will, the Lord will be visiting me and his presence, physical cloud. I'm not talking of some spooky vision that people lie about. Real cloud, like a fog, will fill the room and I will lie down there and the pages of my Bible will be turning by themselves to certain scriptures. I hope you believe it. Hallelujah. We have reduced God. We have reduced God. It's, this is too bad. To an extent that if somebody on a wheelchair stands up, people look and they say, Kai, who knows him? Look at how you put pressure on men of God. People come for miracle service, we have to be asking them, where are you coming from? So that you don't think that they organize things around. It's a shame. It's a shame. He says, he that has a son has life. Has life. Look at what Jesus did. An example of what we should become. Jesus, five loaves and two fish, he multiplied it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. Everywhere we go, we are doing bad or at least average. And yet we claim to have his spirit. There are people who even brag and say, I have the spirit of Jesus without measure. Where is it? Where, where did you keep the spirit of Jesus without measure? There is no sincerity in our pursuit of God. 
we tell a lot of lies. I was teaching a school of ministry students yesterday and I was telling them that the reason why many people do not grow is because we lie. I can fake it now and say there's somebody here, you have a stomach ache and somebody will arise. And because I did not minister in truth, my lie will... Do you know that you can lie for a long time until it looks like the truth to you? How many people don't pray? They come on stage and run their mouth and speak nonsense. I am a prayer warrior. But there is a, there is a touch of the throne that comes on every man of prayer. It follows their teachings. It's like a spirit. It's like a finishing on your words. If you are a man of the altar, it truly, that fire, it's not just the shouting. There is a communication of life. How many people claim they are prayer warriors? And they stand and speak. And while they are speaking, you die spiritually until you start sleeping physically. Because there is no life that is coming. The question God is asking you is why did you stop believing in me? Many of us did not start like this. God is speaking to us. Many of us, when we started, we were spiritual. We meant business with God eventually as we started getting some results in our lives we have thrown the holy spirit out now we are left with letters convincing ourselves that because we are reading scriptures it means we are growing spiritually do you not see the need in our world today there are people with hiv cancer there are people in need of the zoe life that we claim to have we claim to have zoe i am an ambassador of the kingdom then demonstrate it he said, when I came to you, I did not come in the excellency or the eloquence of speech. Because I know the danger that it can do to you. But when I came, I came in a demonstration. I came to prove to you. I came to bring the Jesus of your Bible to be made manifest here and now. Ah, this is the theme of my life. That everywhere I go, I become an expression of his reality. That no matter how you do not believe in God, when I show up, you can at least see something that convinces you of the reality of the Christ. Right now, demons sit in our congregations while we are gyrating and singing and worshipping. They are joining us in the worship because there is absolutely nothing that can kick them out. When we finish, we say, Kai, it was a wonderful service. Together, let's share the grace. And they join us and share the grace. Demons mock men of God all around. And we give all kinds of explanations for it. Do you not see what is happening to the body of Christ? But the Holy Ghost revealed this to me. That in the seasons that are coming, personally, he's going to start leading men into strange encounters and tutorials. Where in a sleep, you will see a strange man come to you and begin to tell you, right, I want to teach you the mystery of spiritual power. And when you wake up in the morning, like, like Solomon, an intelligence you cannot account for all of a sudden this is how this is how god trained me oh this is how god trained me i remember a time in my life when i was sleep in the night this happened for almost two months and at least one of god's generals will come to me in dreams explaining to me their perspectives i remember many of the people that have browsed and have taken from their lives I remember a man called Peter Tan. The first time I would meet that man was in a vision. The first time I ever saw Apostle Paul, it was in a vision. I didn't even know he was the one. I just saw a man who was short and bald headed. After speaking to me, then I asked, who are you? And he didn't respond to me. He moved a while and then he turned and said, Paul. The first time I would see the picture on the internet, I said, this is the man I saw. Yet we know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. The name Koinonia was a revelation. It's not that I just sat down and said, Kai, what should we call it now? No, no. Right now, everything we do is sensual and carnal. The exact blueprint and the things that we are doing in this ministry were a revelation. A revelation by God. It was the spirit of God 
that revealed to me the secret of church growth now i'm not saying i'm throwing away materials and all of that is good I've, I've i've taught us to build ourselves but i'm saying koinonia hear me if we throw away the holy spirit the spirit of god let me have somebody here just one person anybody my visitor my pastor don't worry you came all the way or you served in Jigawa and you are here right now. Your face is new. The Lord will use you greatly. I know you came with a hunger from your heart. I will use you as an example and may that example be your experience. Huh? Hallelujah. Watch this. This is how God designed us to walk. Never separated from the Holy Spirit. If you are looking for women, look for it with him. If he approves it, then he's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you are talking about ladies let it be with his presence if you are eating let it be with him see let me tell you something the holy spirit is not a person you leave and then when you come for koinonia oh sweet holy spirit i i love you and and all those things you say i i love you you are my all in all you are, you are this and that and, and all those kind of things that we bring the holy spirit was sent literally literally to continue the ministry of jesus if you want to know everything the Holy Spirit should do in your life, study Jesus in the Gospels. The Holy Spirit is all that and more. All that and more. There was a time I said, Holy Spirit, now you have to, what am I supposed to expect in your ministry? And he told me, he said, study Jesus. That's what he told me. Everything you ever see Jesus do to the disciples, expect the Holy Spirit to do to you, including revealing himself. There was a day he wanted to reveal himself and he said who do men say i am one day the holy ghost will ask you who do men say i am say yeah you are the spirit of this you are the and then he says who do you call me and you say i don't know you and he says now right my name is the spirit of life and to you that becomes a revelation at once you begin to minister life because his words bring impartation when was the last time you heard the voice of God? Not the one you are lying about. The real voice of God. When was the last time the presence of God came into your room in worship? Let me show you where we have thrown him away. When was the last time you locked yourself? When was the last time you even went for retreat? See, some of you are just remembering that there's a word called retreat. Because you've forgotten about it. You know advancement. You don't know retreat. Unfortunately, in the kingdom... You must retreat to advance. That you shut everything and you began to worship until the temple, your temple now, not a building, is filled with his glory. And songs begin to come. Look at what musicians write. Nonsense. They, they write songs that don't bless anybody. They just come up with songs. The reason why we argue whether songs are scriptural or not is because most of them came from the belly of hungry people who are activating multiple streams of income. When was the last time you stood in his presence and you began to worship until your worship became a song and you touched a depth in the spirit that resonated in your spirit? When was the last time you went to minister, man of God, and you stood in that meeting and when you finished, people were shaking. They could not explain what happened. They knew that something heavenly, like the dew of the morning came upon them. They may not even remember what you thought, but they knew they carried the spirit. When was the last time, because of your teaching, someone just turned and said, Lord, I will seek you. And lock yourself three days. Do that today in our generation and people say you are over spiritualizing things so god is not like that this guy came all the way from where from from jigawa state to come for a meeting because there is a hunger it's not a conference it's not a convention but hunger brought him right God must show us something in this generation. Otherwise, these games that we are playing will end up frustrating us. God must show us something. That's my cry as a man of God. 
I cry to God and I say, Lord, I don't want to do the ordinary. There is something you've got to show me. That's why I love my secret place. Those who are close to me know that my life is like a herbalist. My life is like a herbalist. You don't see me roaming around the street eating granite and moving. I say, ah, it's a joyful day. No, I'm on a pursuit. I'm on a serious pursuit. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face for a living. I seek his face because my relevance is tied to his face. My relevance is tied to his glory. My ability to translate the realities in Christ. Let me tell you something. My, my goal, I've seen it in visions but they have not happened. I saw one time in a vision. Let me share with you one vision that I had. One time, I, I say it jokingly, but truly, truly I had a vision. And a ghastly motor accident happened ghastly motor accident as it was happening it's like i was caught up from somewhere a physical location with my body and all of a sudden i appeared there and it was just like a shadow like this just passed through those dead bodies and including the car there was a sound like the car the way it hit the impact it came back as though nothing had happened ah may god bring us to those days may god bring us to those days God bring us to this place. A day when you speak to the earth to fight Boko Haram and let the military rest. You invoke the power of creation. The soul of the earth. And you find, is it not in your Bible? Where you see that many things happen to people. Flies came from everywhere to disturb the nation of Israel. Because God wanted his people to go. This bow and arrow we are using can only go so far. We are desperately in need of a spiritual generation. AK-47 can only do his best. But let me tell you, AK-47 is limited. Because Boko Haram and all the people, they know that it is now a spiritual affair. Traditional hunters in Meduguri have dared the military to leave them. Because they say they understand how to invoke the powers. You see that? The whole world is already crying for a supernatural dimension. That dimension is coming. Even if you are not interested, there are people who have pledged their lives to contend in the spirit. For you to do that, you must give up this mindset of trying to build a career in ministry. Because you have to be a fool to get to that kind of dimension. But how many people are that willing? Bless you. How many people are that willing? How many people are that willing to see the power of God? Transformation and renewal is the key to making the realities in Christ to become a reality in your life right now. I made up my mind that everywhere I go to preach, I don't like people turning to me and saying, Man of God, your message was powerful powerful in what i want to see how much the gates of hell was shut down as a result of that i want to see how revival stepped into a city as a result of my coming not just that a great man of god visited a place that's not enough and this life is in his son he who has the son has this divine life but the divine life is useless if we just leave it in Christ. It must be translated to find expression. The more of God's life and God's glory transports itself from the realm of the spirit to your present life, the more you are fulfilling what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. And then you become, as I would say, the envoys of his presence, carriers of his glory, carriers of his power. Then you will see the eyes of the blind open. Then you will see the ears of the deaf unstopped. Hallelujah. While I was ministering over the weekend, there was a woman who, I don't know if they went to wash her ear or something, and then the ear was blocked during the workers' conference of CDC. And I called the woman out. And standing face to face, I said, I can either ruin this woman's life with lies or give her something that is of the truth. One time, Benihim was laying hands on people and they were falling down. And Ora Roberts looked at him and said, Benny, 
don't just lay hands on them he said give them something oh fine can you spare 10 minutes for us to watch the video right now media is ready with the video okay media just just play guys maybe you can sit down and then after that you come up let's let's give the media 10 minutes to play the video and um it's a video of the supernatural is to spoil you and then i'll come up and, and and wrap up very quickly hi we're in san juan puerto rico where there's an amazing outpouring of the supernatural taking place the lord is touching so many lives in amazing ways angelic visitation uh you very unique signs and wonders which will actually show you in a few moments, you'll be absolutely astounded at what the Lord is doing. But it's especially touching the younger generation on this island who are getting so fired up for God. There seems to be an acceleration of souls getting saved, healings, deliverances, miracles, all those good things with people deepening in their worship and, and loving the word of God. And so it's a, it's a true revival that is hitting people's hearts as these signs and wonders are being poured out. So we're at the house of uh, restoration and mercy with pastor dennis roja and uh it's just awesome what is taking place pastor dennis is one of the most humble people that i have ever met he's so precious has just a small uh work and a very humble work it reminds me of of, of where jesus loves to hang out and he is at this church doing great things um pastor dennis uh was uh in in, in 1977 uh, he had his first visitation of Jesus. It was an absolute encounter where he could touch Jesus, hear him talk, feel him. Jesus came to see him. He had a crown on his head with every stone of the 12 tribes of, of uh, Israel. And that's significant because we're going to show you the visitation of the stones that have come to Pastor Dennis in this last year um, that confirm that vision that he had back in 1977. When Pastor Dennis received that uh, first vision that he had, it was after he had been saved and delivered out of a lifestyle of homosexuality. He was a, a transvestite, cross-dresser, and the Lord saved him. And after that visionary encounter of Jesus Christ, Jesus touched him on the head, and all the demons completely came out of him. He became so fired up for God, a fiery believer, uh, has worked as an evangelist for a number of years and even in this uh, past few years has been pastoring. But there's been a phenomenal outbreak of signs and wonders, including oil being poured out, uh, gemstones appearing. In fact, he has received over 1,200 gemstones, um, all, already different colors. Some of them are diamonds, some rubies, emeralds. Uh, there's uh, silver uh, and, and, and gold dust that's fallen and all different colors of dust, diamond dust and emeralds and sapphires and, and onyx stone. In fact, I've got onyx, um, little pieces of onyx stone right now, right on my hands here uh, because uh, we just dunked them into this whole barrel of oil that the Lord uh, gave uh, to Pastor Dennis in, in, in his church. It kept pouring out, pouring out. They collected it in a big barrel of oil. And in it is filled with little onyx stones, uh, which is one of the stones of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he was telling us that as people take the oil out to take samples of it, and it has this incredible fragrance to it, that it just keeps filling up. So ho ho however much goes out comes back in. Uh, right now in the current church that he's in that he has a Bible open on the podium and oil just fills the pages of the Bible it's filling the pages of the Bible and uh, little gemstones little rough cut diamonds are falling out of the Bible onto the podium and then as he squeezes the Bible the oil comes out copious amounts of oil this particular oil smells like myrrh it's got the smell of myrrh on the inside of it and it comes pouring off the podium into a uh, collection vessel that he has and at the same time these kind of um, manifestations are happening in fact he's got oil being poured down the walls of his church off the beams onto the floor onto the seats and it's just non-stop continuous pouring out of oil at the same time these manifestations are taking place 
Um, there's souls being saved. There's people being healed. Intense worship and prayer. Uh, uh, deliverances. People are being set free. This is truly a move of God. And that's how you can confirm if a sign is really from God. It'll cause people to worship the Lord more, to seek Him more. The signs of salvation and healing and deliverance and all the things that represent the kingdom of God should accompany the signs and wonders if they're truly signs and wonders from Jesus Christ. It must bring our focus back onto Him. They will get crazy in love with Jesus more and more and more. I tell you, I'm so excited about what the Lord is doing. When the oil started dripping soon after that, um, uh, Pastor Dennis came into his building one morning and all of a sudden the whole place was filled with gold dust that had fallen on the floor and that's when he first noticed the prince he was so excited the Lord revealed to him that this was an angel that had visited and the prints that were on the floor the footprints were actually the footprints of that angel they're about 16 to 20 inches long I believe and um, then uh, he had to go away the cleaning woman came in, cleaned up all the gold, vacuumed up the gold. And so when he came back, the prints were gone. He was so uh, concerned. But the Lord said, I'm going to visit you again. He visited again in that way. And on the carpet were the, the two footprints of the angel. Once again, this time, he cut out the carpet, cut out the footprints to keep them. And uh, we'll just show that to you on the screen. Um, and it's just covered in this in this gold dust with diamond dust, silver, uh, emerald, ruby, sapphire, all these different colors. It's just absolutely brilliant. I know that the actual footage I don't think does it justice, but when you're here, you can actually feel the presence of the Lord all throughout this room. And so it's really an amazing time. Uh, he was also at a, uh, a, a prayer meeting with five men praying and they were uh, praying and as they prayed the Lord visited with an audible voice and with the audible voice the Lord said that he was going to give Pastor Dennis a gift that he had given to no Jew and Pastor Dennis said well why are you giving it to me then because I'm a Gentile and the Lord revealed to him that he was going to give him uh, a, a, a supernatural token of the twelve uh, tribes of Israel the gemstones that represent the twelve tribes of Israel and that he had an assignment for him to do in that way and so then the gemstones uh, uh, came just dropped over the next month they start over one month from May the 1st of 2007 to May the 31st he had all 12 stones with the amber one being the last one when you see them in, 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 in person they're just brilliant and causes a worship an adoration in your heart and awe of the presence of the Lord when you see them absolutely outstanding 1200 gemstones over 1200 gemstones have fallen the 12 uh, special stones that were given to him uh, representing the 12 tribes of Israel that he is embracing an in intercession before the Lord and the Lord has a special assignment for him in the reaching of Israel I believe and uh, many other signs and wonders such as the oil and the the Bible dripping the oil and the walls dripping the oil but all of it has released an acceleration of revival, an acceleration of souls, uh, and, and an acceleration of kingdom power. And this man, uh, Pastor Dennis, I believe was chosen because he is humble, because he is faithful, because he has integrity, because he is unselfish, and because he is wholly devoted to Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, he suffered a lot of persecution. People don't understand, they think he's of a cult or whatever, but I'll tell you, it's not a cult when people are getting saved and brought to the feet of Jesus and into his heart. It's not a cult when Jesus manifests his healing and deliverance power just like in the Bible. It's not a cult when the word of God is being exalted. It's not a cult when the name of Jesus is being so beautifully honored and where the fragrance of the nature and character of God is seen. It is the kingdom. Behold the kingdom of God, because it is at hand. Uh, Peter said, as he prophesied in Acts chapter 2, he said, in the last days, the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all flesh. And one of the things that would happen as a result of that outpouring is that there would be signs and wonders and harvests. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Were you blessed? The goal is to is not just to get you so obsessed with signs and wonders. The goal is to show you that there are realities beyond your current realm. By the grace of God, one of these days will just come and will dedicate about an hour and we'll watch a few videos of the revivals that have happened before now. It's important to connect with the moves of God and the things that he has done in time past. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because before he comes, brothers and sisters, I tell you, there will be a mighty church that will arise. All of these spiritual mysteries, tonight's message is just a spiritual awakening. Is to awake us from the slumber and to tell us there is more in God. That we no longer begin to just put our terms of work with God to money and marriage and power and mundane things. Thank God for these things. We just finished a financial series. But let me tell you the truth. God is looking for revivalists. God is looking for mighty men and women that he will do great business with. And I've made myself available. God knows with my entire life. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, fountain of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh Spirit of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, oh, sing, oh, sing, you are mighty on your throne. The spirit of the deep and weep, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. 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 Mighty on your throne. Oh, sing, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, oh, fountains of the deep. Cry out. You are mighty on your throne. Lord, this is a cry from a generation that is desperate to see your power and your glory. We are tired of church and religion. We want to see the kingdom come. We want to see his power revealed. The reality of the Zoe life, the divine life, the incorruptible seed of the word of God we want to become epistles of power break forth oh spirit of the deep cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh see you ancient Zion's king cry out Kadosh you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, O oh fountains of the deep. Cry out, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Say, You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty. 
mighty on your throne. You are 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 mighty on your throne. We refuse to reduce your power. We step up the standard. Mighty on your Ancient 
שלום, תבואו בשלום, שלום, you're welcome in my life, שלום, שלום, תבואו בשלום, שלום, you're welcome in this place, שלום, You must walk conscious from today if you have received the Son I want you to know that there is a life in you crying for expression there is a divine life that can heal the sick there is a divine life that can cast out devils there is a divine life that can change hopeless situations There is a divine life that can bring God to the sea. Stop preaching powerless sermons. Stop teaching just theology without grace. Stop exciting the people of God with no results in their lives. Lift your voice and pray one minute. I am determined to be supernatural in every way. In every way. No. The sons of God are not natural people. They are supernatural. In every way. Pray. My hands are supernatural. My words are supernatural. Lift your voice and pray. My utterances are supernatural. They carry the life-giving power. The Sowell life. The power to heal. The power to alter the destinies of people. The power to transform their lives. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in my life. 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 Say, you are mighty in my life. 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 One more time. You are mighty in my life. You are mighty in my life. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that from today dead religion will die out of your life I pray for you that the substance of spiritual reality that which authenticates the manifestation of the Zoe life that which proves here and now that you are not natural that which proves That the earthly the terrestrial has become celestial and heavenly 
I pray in the name of Jesus that may that life begin to manifest through your life. That your hands will become instruments of revival and signs and wonders. That when men need God to show up, they will call on your attention because you will be the clearest representation of the divine life in your territory. I pray for you, may your words carry the power from heaven. May your words no longer be barren and powerless. May your words authenticate the fact that the spirit of life is at work in you. May they bring healing. May the words bring grace. May they bring life. Like the river in Ezekiel 47. That everywhere it flows. Let the fish that was dead come back to life. Let the souls that are dead come back to life. I pray that from today, your life and your ministry will no longer just be a ministration of death, wasting the time of God's people. May you step into an unusual dimension. I'd like you to receive what I'm releasing upon you. It's a ministration of the Spirit. Many of you will go back to your meetings from today and you will begin to see cripples walk. You will begin to see the demonstration. Not just in talk. Talk, talk, talk with no results. There are many of you that will go back to your homes and the moment you step in there, all of a sudden your territory begins to react because the Zoe life, not just that which is in Christ alone, that which has been manifest right here right now right here right now right here right now you will go back to your territories many of you will pass people and you will hear spirits scream out of them you didn't plan to pray for them but you took the presence of God you took the life of heaven so way the life that controls heaven so way the life that upholds all things. I'm praying for you that everything that has defied God in your life, in the name that is above all names, may that Zoe life come upon it right now. May that Zoe life come upon every sick body here right now. May that life of God let it come upon every dying spiritual life. Every lukewarm spiritual life. The life that makes men doubt whether God is working with you or not. I pray for you. Let it change from tonight. You don't have to tell people you are a man of God. Carry that life. Carry that divine life. May that life halt sickness from your body permanently. This repeated stamina circle of nonsense that comes upon your body. Discern the Lord's body so that you will be strong. Discern the Lord's body. Father, I pray let there be mighty men and women that will arise from this meeting tonight let tonight's meeting produce a spiritual awakening and i stretch my hands and i pray for you whatever you came here with in the name that is above all names that is not consistent with the zoe life whatever it is that is not consistent with the life of heaven right now i declare in the name of jesus that it leaves your body and your life now i cause every pain i cause every situation that is attempting to challenge god in your life in the name of jesus christ may the lord put a testimony in your mouth that will verify before men
that you are a carrier of his presence father we give you all the praise listen walk out of this meeting not just with an excitement but with a consciousness that you are not only a carrier but a dispenser the bible says the first adam was made a quickening soul a quickening soul can only benefit but cannot dispense but the second adam was made a life-giving spirit a life-giving spirit next time someone is sick around you don't just turn and say bring him to joshua sermon or bring him to this tell him in the name of jesus i agree with you you have been doing it as an ordinary christian that's why it's not working you have just been doing it and say after all i'm a brother do it now as one who is together with the holy spirit always realize that it's not about you it's about the paracletos always realize you are going to preach don't just go alone i'm going to go and minister you'll be disappointed go with him when you stand on that stage even if you do not know what to say realize that there is one the spirit of life as you stand to sing and minister realize that you are not just talking songs or melodies but you are ministering life and you will be amazed to see people change don't be afraid of confronting situations with god without god there are many things that are not possible hallelujah i want to pray for people here right now keep standing everyone i want to pray for people right now you had this fiery message tonight on the life of god there are people who have not received the son of god you have heard about jesus you may have even preached about him he has been offered to you many times but you have not received him hallelujah there are others who have given their lives to christ but sincerely you know that the name of what you are doing right now based on the standard of god you have missed out on the track of spiritual progress and you need to make your way those two categories of people i don't care if you have been a preacher for 30 years you need to make your way right you say lord this thing i've been doing is not christianity i'm i'm i'm, I'm tired of playing games right now inside and outside please make your way quickly and come to the front i want to pray for you i want to pray for you don't sit back don't wait for someone to come before you God bless you. Find your way to the front. There are many people outside. Don't sit back. Make your way to the front. God bless you. Koinonia, keep celebrating them as they come. Your life must change don't worry leave I alone hallelujah tonight will mark a turning point and a defining moment in the life of many people hallelujah please draw draw close as I lead you to pray that prayer from the depth of your heart um, I understand there's a woman who there are there are two people i'm supposed to minister to but i'll minister to one right now there is a woman who has been having issues of miscarriage this is not word of knowledge i am aware that the woman is supposed to be here i don't know if she came if she's around is is that person around or that family you are the one not just word of knowledge you, you came uh, is this your first time up in here come you're the one with that situation From where did you come? Mina. Mina. How long has it been? Four times. Four times. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. You get pregnant, you lose the baby. We are glad to announce to you that this is where it stops. I guarantee. Listen, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. God did not bring you here to waste your time. There is always a spirit behind it four times is not mistake four times is no longer biology four children four destinies four lives thrown away by the assault of darkness 
Now imagine if this was your church and a woman comes like this to come and meet the great man of God. Then you talk grammar and by the time you finish explanation, the Bible never said creation is waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. It says creation is waiting for the manifestation. Madam, I assure you that not only will God set you free, but there will be restoration in your life. You believe that? Lay your hands on your stomach and let's pray. Brings joy. We represent the government of heaven. Lay your hands. That devil of darkness. Your time is over in this woman's life. Right now. You are a wicked spirit of darkness. And you must leave. Right now. Go. Out of her. By the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an anointing coming upon you. For you to be free of this nonsense that the devil has planted in your stomach i feel heat leaving my hands to you that wicked spirit in the name of jesus christ i declare by the power of the holy spirit that you are free of this demonic influence not only will you give birth you will go and take in immediately and your child will stay you will have as many children as you want in the name of jesus christ this thing is not happening to you alone. Huh? This is, this is a trend in your family. This is because I'm praying for you and I see a spirit. Huh? I'm seeing a trend. It's something that keeps happening. People miscarry and people have all kinds of things. And so it's not like it's something bad you did as a person. Are you getting my point now? But Jesus Christ sets you free. Where's your husband? He's in Mina too. Go and tell him that not only will the Lord um, bring a child to your family, God will turn around your entire lives because you are here. You believe that? Father, in the name of Jesus, confirm your word. Like Eli, I speak to you like you spoke to Anna. Go and come back with your child. It's done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you coming, I want you to lift your hands. Please, you are not reciting a poem. Young and old mean it serious with Jesus. See, the trouble is when people come out like this, they suddenly remember that they were emotional and they came out. And then they are embarrassed and then they are ashamed. This is serious business. Hallelujah. Say after me from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. Some of you, as you are praying, the power of God will come upon you strongly because the gospel is the power of God. Right? To them that believe. I receive your life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from tonight, I'm no longer natural. I'm no longer ordinary. The power that raised Christ from the dead is within me i declare that habits addictions and every life that is not consistent with that of the kingdom has no power over me right now the holy spirit the very spirit of god the life of god is at work in me i declare that i go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep those hands lifted, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. I commend these ones to you. Spirit of the living God. You are the life-giving spirit of God. I pray that tonight, in a very supernatural way, you will come upon their lives and you will make them ambassadors of the kingdom. Right now, in the name of Jesus, may that life and that power, may that fire, that all-surpassing life of the spirit come upon you. Breaking every chain and every limitation that comes with the old man. In the name of Jesus, I set you free to begin to experience the life of God. The Zoe life. In the name of Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we ask you tonight. Invade our lives. Do something remarkable in our lives tonight. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone once again. We have a lot to do tonight. And we're trusting God to be able to go so far. Every moment in his presence. Let me tell you one of the reasons why the presence of God should be greatly desired. In his presence, there is not only liberty. In his presence, there is wisdom. In his presence, there is understanding. It's in his presence he reveals to us the mystery behind the happenings in our lives. And he shows us the system. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apologize for that. Praise the Lord. Tonight's teaching is going to bless us in no small way. I like our hearts to really, really be opened. The Lord wants to speak to us by the power of his spirit hallelujah the lord put something in my spirit that i'd like us to write down that i think will be very important and it will set the pace tonight um, there are so many people outside as we always say you are part of us and um, i know that the lord brought you to bless you and do not let distance distract you I see people standing with something to write. I want you to know we really appreciate the sacrifice. And um, this that you are doing will speak in your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when God gave man the mandate to dominate, the word dominion means sovereign control. Sovereign control. And every religion, every movement promises one thing, dominion. The fear of man has been his inability to completely control certain situations and circumstances. Please, I want you to listen. The things we cannot control are the things that bring fear to our lives. So people fear poverty, for instance, because of um, an effect it seems to be able to bring to our lives and we cannot do anything about it. We fear death. We fear guns because we think they can do something to us. We fear failure because it does something to us. Every time man is unable to control a process, it brings fear it brings a sense of subjugation. So every movement that has come through history and civilization promises to lead man to a pathway where we will be able to access dominion. But we know that there is no true dominion and authority outside of Christ. In Genesis 1.26, the Bible says, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our own image. It says, Let them have sovereign control dominion hallelujah what what is happening to you here every time is the process that will bring you into true dominion i told us again and again that dominion is not a wish dominion is not an impartation dominion is a reaction something happens to your life that leads to an end called dominion hallelujah write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life write this down something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life something i do not know is responsible I said for you to write it this way so that every time you are reading it, 
you can personalize it and it can create the effect that will birth change something i do not know is responsible for the limitation in my life the second thing i want you to write is this something i am aware of but have not believed is also responsible for my limitation something i am aware of but have not believed is responsible for my limitation there is something i am aware of there is an information a revelation i am aware of i'm not ignorant of it i'm aware of it but my refusal to believe it has brought limitation to my life number three something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon underline consistently acted upon something i have believed but have not consistently acted upon is also responsible for my limitation these three factors have limited us in no small way something we do not know is responsible for the limitations in our lives two something we know an information we have come across but we have not chosen to believe is also responsible for the limitation in our lives number three something we have believed but have not consistently it may be that you have acted upon it but you have not consistently acted upon see the danger is that any of these three categories will produce the same result see how frustrating it is are we together now so we have three people here one who is completely ignorant and he's not even aware he's ignorant his miracle starts when he's aware that he's ignorant not even when the solution comes the awareness that you need help is already deliverance in itself let me tell you how satan destroys people he keeps you in ignorance are we together now and he closes every door that can even make you aware you are ignorant that's the first person his end is predictable number two is the one who is he's not ignorant he's had access to the information that can change him or her but the person has refused to believe you see i found out that it's not what you hear that changes you it's what you choose to believe and live by so this person here has all the information has read all the books has gone for all the seminars comes for koinonia every week and you will think that he would produce certain kinds of results right the third person not only is not ignorant not only has believed but has refused to consistently act now the terrible thing is you would think the first two should be better than the first person but their results will all come out the same hallelujah that's why the interesting thing about god is when you start working with him you have to go all the way to see your progress you can't take two steps with god and expect you will see any remarkable progress you've had you, you've got to go all the way and then you will see that there is progress tonight i want to teach on strategic kingdom influence strategic kingdom influence this teaching will bless you it will change your life strategic kingdom influence i want to teach us a major tool for kingdom advancement in the 21st century strategic kingdom influence one of the please look up especially those of us who are pastors ministries fellowships and groups i think i was uh, i don't know if it was the school of ministry students we we're having a discussion yesterday and i was telling them a true shepherd listen please 
a true shepherd must build people intentionally there's no lecturer who comes to the lecture hall guessing what he thinks the students should become are we together every like the students don't even know what they should become many times a few may know but the lecturer is only a lecturer because he is privy to an information he knows what the students should become if they diligently stay under his tutelage when jesus came he knew what he wanted the disciples to become he wanted them to become apostles envoys advocates of his ideology and he knew exactly what to do it's a terrible thing when a pastor is confused about the path of spiritual progress of the members meaning that he doesn't really know what builds the people he's hoping and sadly I, I say this and i'm challenging especially those of us who are men of god you don't sit down and just guess what to teach people on saturday night or sunday early in the morning you just think and say Ka, what have i not talked about character people are misbehaving in my church you now run a hammer on character and then you find out that uh, people need to learn on miracles and then you go and teach on miracles your growth will not be constructive every pastor ought to develop people in five areas number one their spiritual lives these are just um, additions that I think I should communicate before we go into our discussion tonight. Number one, our spiritual life. Any pastor, any leader that cannot guide the people God has committed to him to really know God, to come to a point where they can hear the voice of God, to come to a point where they conform to the image of the Christ, to come to a point where the average member is passionate about the things of the kingdom no matter what else you teach people if you don't bring them to a point of addiction and love and passion for god then they are not growing hallelujah yes where they seek his face where they love him genuinely not where they use him where they love him so that's the first area and that involves them being born again not just being healed they have to be saved pastors make sure the congregation of the people you are leading among other things and before other things their salvation is secured i don't care what else happened in that church if the people are not saved they are not growing praise the lord they must be saved and established in righteousness where your members become people of conviction let me tell you something i have seen congregations where the level of revelation that comes from the preacher to them is very low but i respect those congregations because the little the man of god knows he has brought his members to a point of conviction i'm irritated by an assembly that does not have values spiritual convictions it's better to be wrong about something so that even when you change you know what you left not that you are there today you think divine healing is scriptural tomorrow you are not sure today you think prosperity is good and then your man of god comes and him too he's not sure there are times you see pastors oscillating you go for a conference and hear something and you come back ship it to your congregation and teach them only for you to grow two weeks later and find out that you wouldn't have brought that revelation that way and then the members are hearing a lot of things but they are not growing hallelujah number two every true shepherd must be able to build people's finances i'm absolutely convinced that a man of god who does not pay attention to the financial well-being of his congregation is not only a wicked man of god he's not only a wicked man of god but he's a dangerous man of god You know why? Because the Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. If you want to get the heart of a congregation focused towards God, there are certain things in their lives that can really become distractions. There is no how you want a man to serve God, lie down, you want him to give you three or four or five hours of his life, whereas he knows that his rent is due. 
are we together now and then it is also wicked honestly this is my proposition i think it is really wicked for a man of god to stand up and then say oh how many people are going to give one one million naira i was telling the school of ministry students and then you have people come out and then they are they are they are offering now i don't care whether the church is using their offering or not these people give offerings every week even if it's five naira it left them is that true they pay their time and then the minister of the gospel in turn is not empowering them and so they are broke they are failures in their offices they are at the lower levels they can't do nothing they don't have options they've not grown to a point where they can be able to say look i can i want to go to church somebody cover for me no influence sometimes we we teach what we call a replacement theology where we can use one dimension of the kingdom to replace the need for another it doesn't exist it's error and a man of god can be so bold in error and mislead people many pastors who don't pay attention to the finances of their members are doing well themselves they are doing well because they are offering spiritual value and the members sow into their lives the members maybe pay their rent some of the pastors collect salary so i can teach you all kinds of things and immediately after the service my dinner is secured i'm going to go and eat but will you eat a good shepherd does not march on his sheep he lays down his life for his sheep you see this is why many congregations are um, is a beehive of frustrated people there are issues people have that will not allow them to grow number three every true shepherd should teach people and guide them along the area of excellence in leadership how to excel career wise how to excel family wise every church every congregation is a unit of family you cannot have an irresponsible father a very wicked mother come to a church what do you think that bad father will become as a hod he would translate his understanding about fatherhood and that's what he's going to use to lead the department are we together now every arm robber came from somewhere he didn't fall from a tree are we together every prostitute or harlot came from somewhere all those who are making a mess of society came from family and a platform like this the church is an institution that influences the mindset of people gives them very very scriptural perspectives on leadership how do you excel in your place of work it matters to god how do you excel in your endeavor it matters to god how do you excel in your business how do you do it right number what now number four every pastor must teach his congregation on principles of relationships relationships are everything in this kingdom your breakthrough comes through relationships the tragedy in your life comes through relationships jesus understood this he didn't he didn't play with relationships we lose opportunities because we do not know how to master relationships we lose destiny help us money is not everything as important as it is one ability to maximize a quality relationship will give you what one billion will not give you relationships hallelujah number five every pastor must be able to teach his congregation how to be agents of national transformation 
every pastor must be able to teach his member life applicable teachings teachings they can take outside of the confines of the church back to society and begin to shape cultures and change systems with it listen let me tell you the churches that command influence in every territory are the churches whose impact are felt even sociologically it's not just by buying rice or giving people sewing machine or or you know uh, buying pot or killing cow those things are important but it's not just about doing things it's about institutionalizing a mindset within a territory so the church becomes noted everybody within that territory benefits there are so many people benefiting from koinonia the national union of road transport workers are benefiting rental services benefiting mtn glow airtel benefiting are we together now there are many people who may not be christians but will fight to protect the continuity of koinonia because they can see how it translates to the well-being of their own lives so you build people intentionally you don't just sit down and say i got up and i think i feel like saying this today and then people jump and then at the end of the service you ask the people what did you gain and the person tells you honestly me too i don't know but my my spirit picked something you are not going to grow that way i assure you did you know did you know that i've taught us here it's not your intention that becomes your reality but your conviction you want to be great but something about your belief will limit you you want to be greatly anointed but there is something you must know i'm telling you you will thank me in the years to come for these fruits in the name of jesus christ i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more i'm chasing after you no matter what i have to do i need you more and more more and more more when you grow spiritually and otherwise it becomes there is something there is a name god gives this kind of people he calls them a delightsome land you know what it is like a delightsome a likable personality something about your transition in the spirit creates an effect in this realm and so you are well desired well desired I was telling the school of ministry um, students yesterday that the project this project you see called koinonia the benefit of koinonia will be experienced in the next 10 to 20 years not now hallelujah my target is people from ages 0 to 45 outside 45 you can join but the target that that generation of individuals is what we want to target in the next 20 years many people you see now 70 years etc in business in politics no matter how they want to hold on to power many of them would have transited it will now be our turn hallelujah so it's a project just like satan destroyed america when God's generals were there preaching, what was he doing? To, they forgot about their children and the devil just targeted them. From 25 years, they were there in the crusade and the children were, they left the children and the wives at home because they felt those people did not need change. So the men of God were preaching and the devil said, I, I give up on these ones. But he started growing with them. Channel O came. MTV came. Right? All kinds of things came. They grew. They didn't train them. They grew. They shaped their ideology. They are the ones today who are the leaders. 
prime ministers, heads of banks, heads of institutions. And so a system runs, I mean, they play the world like a chess, but it's going to change. I know we don't look like it yet. I assure you, you quote me. I've been saying certain things that I'll keep saying. We will all be great. And the best part is that we will know ourselves. That's what will happen. Don't trivialize the power of the Holy Spirit. Just give him time. He will surprise you. Give him time. Write this word down. Let's begin our teaching. Strategic kingdom influence. Um, let's define influence very quickly. I have a lot to talk about and I want us to finish very fast. Amen and amen and amen. Influence. What is influence? The capacity to have an effect. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone. Please make sure you are writing. The capacity to have an effect on the character, development, and behavior of something or someone is called influence. When you sustain an ability to create an effect in somebody's behavior, somebody's character, and his development, we call that influence. Number two, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, influence is the ability and the platform to change mindsets, comma, shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way change mindsets so the ability and the platform to be able to change mindsets shape opinions and move others to act in a certain way is called influence how we need this one of the keys to kingdom advance in the 21st century is not just evangelism it's called influence and i add kingdom influence we have a mandate as a church listen listen we are not just here roaming around wondering what to do with our lives there is a mandate upon us that mandate is found in genesis 1 26. help us media genesis 1 26 Matthew 6 verse 10 and Mark 16, 15 and 16. Genesis 1, 26. Matthew 6 verse 10. Mark 16, 15 and 16. It reveals our mandate as the church. Every one of you under the sound of my voice is part of those to make this mandate come to pass. And God said, Genesis 1, 26, let us make man after our image our likeness and let them have sovereign control dominion sovereign control the power of legislature the ability to extend an influence over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing and everything that creeps upon the earth we are God's managers. The state of the earth today is a revelation of our failure. Our inability to manage this domain of God's kingdom. We have a mandate as a church. Matthew 6 verse 10. Everyone read. Jesus was teaching this in what we have believed to be the Lord's prayer. One to read thy kingdom come how by your will being done in earth exactly as it is in heaven listen heaven is the way it is for two reasons one the presence of god two a culture a culture a culture there is a culture that makes heaven heaven and god is saying when you when we pray this is god's desire that his kingdom his sovereign rule 
will find expression in this our sphere in the exact way in other words reproduce the culture of heaven in your environment it's a mandate and then he further expands on how to do it mark chapter 16 mark 16 15 to 16 are you there media please help us you're giving us mark 10 you have to correct it please mark 16 15 okay and he said unto them read on please want to read go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature hold on the first assignment is go that means he expects a body that is moving action go then he tells you the strategy he says he didn't say go around the street he says go into enter a system called cosmos don't just go around thank god for sharing tracks and all of that but he gives you an idea his system of invasion i want you to enter a strata of human activities and when you are establishing that strata he said preach the gospel not to every human being not to every human being to every creature creature everything alive should feel the impact of the gospel communicate that influence and that ideology write this down our mandate as a church not koinonia i mean the global church the ecclesia our mandate as the church is to establish the lordship of christ i will keep drumming this till we get it again and again establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's the first dimension to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men and the instrument we use to produce this is called the gospel the gospel the gospel is not just a message the gospel is an instrument the end of it is to establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men number two to extend this is my concern tonight to extend the culture and authority of heaven across every territory and strata of human activity i'll take it again to extend the culture and authority of heaven to extend the culture and the authority of heaven across every territory and strata or sphere of human activity listen if all we do is establish the lordship of christ in the hearts of men that's important but we must go the extra mile to make sure that every strata of human activity also come under the influence of the christ look up please let me tell you where our lukewarm attitude came from our lukewarm attitude came from preachers who in an attempt to make us have the perspective of eternity in view have trivialized the necessity of the church today are we together now so in a bid to teach us and prepare us for rapture teach us about the second coming of christ etc etc right we we push it to the limit and then we give people an idea like every other thing is a waste every other thing don't don't worry about building no house don't build any business don't do anything is unnecessary just make sure you love god and remain rapturable and we say that to justify and then we find out that after 20 years jesus has not come but your child has come but your bills have come these are the ones that are coming jesus that you are preparing for is coming that's true but he has not come but your bills have arrived right the need for um your responsibility has arrived we have to be careful the way we teach people things many of us are well-meaning people but we are victims of an ideology that must be balanced i'm always obsessed with balance of course we have the other side of the equation 
people who are so careless about the things of God. They are just carnal. All they want is cars, houses, oh, this and that and that. They are, they are so carnal. Those kinds of people will go to hell when Jesus comes because they are obviously not living with eternity in view. But there is a balance. Everyone say there is a balance. There is a balance. So we have an assignment to extend the culture. When promise was, you know, talking to us, I'm sure some of you were shocked looking at him. You cannot imagine that a gentleman like this was keeping dreadlocks and wearing earrings all around when he came to Zaria. You think he just wanted to wear it. He was reacting to something within him. Somebody told him that appearance or that state was equal to manhood and masculinity. And so he was a victim of his mindset. What happened to him? Not just deliverance, but what happened to him was a translation. Another idea, an alternative structure came upon his life. See, you don't change people by just flogging them, insulting them, castigating them, or telling them, do this. When you tell somebody, do this, the person will not do it. He's reacting to something within him. If you don't change, that's why they bring people out of prison and they say, make sure you don't steal again. And you see the person standing, they say, sign here, and he's signing. One month later, they say, ah, they say, honestly, this time around, this and that and that. Because they, they don't create programs that influence the minds of the people. You cast away that spirit and change their paradigm, and then you win them. Amen. Let me discuss our mandate and the 21st century i really want this to be relevant to us the mandate of the church i think one of the confusion in the church right now is how to be able to weave kingdom living and the reality of our changing society whether you believe it or not times are changing say times are changing the only constant thing in life is change the 21st century has brought in a lot of changes a lot of changes changes in the way even some of us who are young met certain things that we can even relate to and say ah things have changed we're not so old like that but at least we can look back and be able to say yesterday there was xyz today is, is now obsolete not to talk of our parents and our fathers and mothers here they can tell you a lot of things we have no idea some of our little ones here don't know what a typewriter looks like some of them, when they grow, I'm sure they will not even know what a stove looks like. I'm sure by the time they are adults, we'll be using e-cookers. <laughs> oh, don't limit the mind of man. Believe me. Who knew that somebody will create something as, as much as, I mean, hundreds of tons and then lift it up in the air, just like that. Even you, you can't hang in the air. Yet, plane that is heavier than you can rise up in the air. So, don't, don't trivialize the power of the mind. Cultures have changed. The interests of people have changed. Perspectives have changed. Technology has changed a lot of things. Technology has changed our appetites. The world right now is only hours away from anywhere. Anywhere, hours away. I'm sure that in the, in the next future, or in, in the next uh, maybe five, ten years, I'm sure you may not have to dial numbers to call them again. They will program them to work with your mind. I just think of Nas and his phone beeps. It can happen. I mean, there's artificial intelligence in phones. Phones can feel, phones can record. They can have memories. So the 21st century is here. And what is the attitude as far as our mandate is concerned? Because the old ways of doing things, even as far as kingdom advancement, will no longer be effective. I think it was school of ministry again. I was telling them, did you know that right now you can stand near an influential man's daughter attempting to preach to her they can just snap you and in five minutes the police are coming to catch you and they'll say you are harassing her are we together now 
you are harassing her so the world the world is is gradually strangling the opportunities the access points we have to reach people and we must be able to reinvent ourselves by the spirit of god to adjust to the change and yet be effective in communicating our mandate is god blessing us one of the tragic things about the metamorphosis of the church with respect to the current change is that most of the change that is being effected in the church is not effected with the authority and the supervision of the holy spirit let me tell you what happens when you try to adjust to the 21st century outside of the holy spirit you will become something else completely something else there are pastors under pressure to turn their churches to align to the 21st century please listen to me there are businessmen there are there are entrepreneurs there are all kinds of people families the the paradigm of fatherhood parenting leadership is being compelled to change to adjust to 21st century living but you see a believer is not just one who is born again a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the kingdom and that your change must be with the holy spirit supervision so that he can tell you which attributes are timeless that will not change and which ones are flexible enough not everything in the christian life is permitted to change there are timeless things there are components of the believer's life that must remain constant and i'll tell you where we get this teaching from first corinthians 9 22 please i need to balance this teaching is god blessing us already first corinthians 9 22 this is the bible stand that many contemporary preachers sadly have picked in and we have brought it to seemingly be a strategy now i believe in metamorphosis i'm teaching you change now but that that change must be guided by the wisdom of the holy spirit everyone read this is paul writing to the corinthian church one to read to the weak became as i as weak that i may gain the weak are we together read on i am made all things to all men that i might by all means save some now paul is saying something interesting here let me translate this for you paul is saying i can become anything to anybody this is a nice verse for satan to take advantage of meaning become a smoker to smokers are we together become a prostitute to prostitutes to win them that's not what the bible is saying but that's what has happened in many churches in our obsession to metamorphose and become relevant in the 21st century we have been misguided by this scripture and many things that happen there are churches where members vote the sermon for the week that the pastor preaches are we together there are churches where all kinds of things happen now i don't insult these people at least they are serving god but that's that's dangerous we are removing certain ancient landmarks so as i attempt to teach us on that's why i call this strategic kingdom influence not just kingdom influence it must be strategic meaning the holy spirit is involved hallelujah the idea listen the idea of paul here is that i am able to make adjustment the idea here is not an idea about leaving your convictions it's an idea of making adjustments the summary of this entire communication is that paul is saying because of the reality of my society i am able to make adjustments listen any church any pastor that cannot adjust should be ready for empty pews i repeat any pastor any businessman any ceo any worker that cannot adjust notice i didn't say leave your convictions adjust means to create allowance for the excesses of people adjust means to create allowance for the limitations of people adjust means to create allowance for the perspectives of people when you become rigid and stringent forget about advancing the kingdom in today's world one of our fathers who has done that most remarkably 
that is a model for all of us is Papa E.E. Adeboe. I've studied the redeemed Christian church very carefully and what had been the secret of their exponential growth and influence. I will tell you, the key is this flexibility, not compromise. There is a difference between compromise and flexibility. Papa Iya Deboe is a man of strong convictions. He's very conservative in his approach to Christianity alongside his wife. But he realized that if I must achieve the mandate of seeing every redeemed church or at least in every two or three houses, let there be one redeemed member, I must be flexible enough and yet uncompromising. The key is to maintain your convictions but give allowance for the conviction of others. Let them be able to find a place in your vision. And so you see that it began to open up different models of redeemed branches. And so you can see a redeemed branch that is generally conservative, still adhering to the foundational tenets. And you can see one that is quite modern. In fact, very modern. You may not know that this is redeemed. His job as a man of God is to ensure that the central leadership sustain the foundational um, model and the understanding of redeem. This is a winning strategy. So you can find redeem in France. You can find redeem in, um, in, in certain places that you would not expect. Many pastors are unwilling to bend. We are stringent on our ideologies and we do not want to create flexibility. So the key is that we must be able to make adjustment. Everybody say adjustment. Adjustment is one key to strategic kingdom advancement. You cannot say, I cover my hair. I don't, I don't believe in wearing trousers, for instance, or leaving hair. And you say, any other person I come across who I see with trousers or hair not covered is a devil. I tear the person down. You are going to be frustrated. At the same time, nobody should put pressure on you to influence your convictions unnecessarily. You have a right to sustain your convictions. But at the same time, you must be able to give room. Are we together now? I'm teaching us on our mandate and the 21st century. I've gone to minister in several places. And um, when you go to minister in places, you'll be amazed at the approach of many people. I've gone to ministries that are very conservative. Very, very conservative. I've gone to other ministries that are generally charismatic and unorthodox. I've gone to ministries that are wild. I've gone to ministries that are lawless. That one is not charismatism, it's lawlessness. Yet, in the midst of it, I have been able to make adjustment without violating my convictions. Are we together? Koinonia runs on certain convictions. But part of the reason why God has blessed us is because we have been able to make adjustments. Are we together now? Adjustments that can allow people to, to come in and be able to not necessarily incorporate their ideologies but give them space to know God for themselves and in that knowing God many people begin to adjust not by force but on the strength of the information that is coming to them is God blessing us yeah. you cannot win people you resent you cannot stand and all of a sudden you see a lady with heavy makeup wearing a very tight trouser and all of that and you know you just give this atmosphere of look at this prostitute and this devil you want to kill me and your idea was to come and win her and then you come and stand and oh you are a sinner you see i will not listen to your message no no no, no. it has nothing to do with being angry i will not listen to your message you come to preach to me for 10 minutes you don't even know what my name is you are initiating me into a cult you are misrepresenting the love of christ at the same time i will not come and see you and you say ah uh, you really want to preach christ to me if 
prove that you love by coming to my house or coming to this. I'm, I'm in the club. If you really want to win me, come and meet me at the club. I won't come. Go to hell. Are we together? There is a balance. So that we don't begin to do stupid things. There are ladies that have entered relationship. You ask them why. They say, I'm on a code. Ah, you are not SSS. That's, that's, that's too costly. You say, I entered relationship. It's not love. Oh, I don't love him. Ask him. I, I am passionate about souls. You are getting it wrong. I'm trying to explain this scripture. I become all things to all men. Does not mean I leave my convictions to turn into everything. No. Whether you are wearing jeans or suit, you are a Christian. And being a Christian is, is exact. There's no confusion about it. Christianity is not Buddhism. There are exact tenets. There are exact foundational convictions. Write this down. We must carefully study the word. Please, let's write. Let's hurry up. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. We must carefully study the word and adopt timeless scriptural strategies for effective kingdom advance. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is found in the Bible. Timeless secrets that can advance the kingdom through any culture any kind of civilization and when we study the bible we will find therein secrets that can survive any kind of sociological metamorphosis it doesn't matter what dispensation the truths there remain timeless keys to kingdom influence let's discuss now Keys to kingdom influence. Ask and now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Your life as it rises on us. Sing it one more time. Ask and I'll give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see your life. As it rises on us. Keys to kingdom influence. Listen. I've told us that the key to strategic kingdom advancement is called influence. The new kind of evangelism that will break through any protocol and any hardness is called influence evangelism. The advocacy that comes when a man can gain a platform and is able to influence the convictions of people. Never trivialize influence and its effect to a person, a territory, a people, and a civilization. At every point in your life, you are being influenced by somebody and you are influencing somebody. Keys are very important in the kingdom. You hear Jesus speak again about keys. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, and the principles that give us access. The keys of the kingdom are the mysteries, the laws, the principles that give us access. 
there are keys to kingdom influence and in the name of the lord jesus christ i'm praying that as i begin to teach this as you embrace it you will step into a level of influence that will surprise you the lord spoke to us and said this is a year of multiplied grace and influence he expects us to do more and he's guiding us on how to get there number one the first key to strategic kingdom influence is to have a pace setting trailblazing global mentality write it the way i said it don't write your idea pace setting comma i took time to write it this way it's supposed to create an effect don't scatter it pace setting comma trailblazing comma global mentality write it and look at me let's cane out certain mediocrities in our mind we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days mm. we're on our way to better days hold on pace setting trailblazing global mentality see we many of us are still growing and we're still coming into the comprehension of how low and depraved our thinking and our ideology is as marketed to us by our institutions as marketed to us by our upbringing as marketed to us by our christian advocates our pastors we are largely victims of the thinking of a man who have sat under for many years our approach the approach of the average christian is not global the approach of the average christian is not pace setting we are comfortable with mediocrity yet we want to command influence a music artist no global mentality no pace setting mentality so we are comfortable borrowing anything from anywhere not yielding to the spirit of creativity that will launch us into unimaginable feats there are many of us seated here who can do so much for god but our mindsets are small i have challenged the leaders again and again koinonia is an apostolic ministry this is only an a local platform for us to meet together but the approach is global the approach is, is way beyond Nigeria and Africa. You see, we must be able to excel. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew 5, 14. Then Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 3. Media, you have to help us. We really have to be fast. Jesus said this, Matthew 5, 14. Write it down and please look up. One, two, read. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. The second statement explains the first line. It says you are the light of the world. Then it compares you. It says you are a city. In other words, can a city that is set on a hill be hidden? Global approach to life. We start up businesses with no idea of global approach. The average business in Nigeria, if it lasts 10 years, is a miracle. 15 years is a wonder. We don't think far. Right? The average church, do you know how many churches start in January? And by December, they are dead. Because the way the pastor started and was running, you would think rapture will happen tomorrow. And he runs no, no sense of leadership, no pace setter, trailblazer mentality we come into a system and do the exact same thing listen listen there is a difference between a manager and a leader a manager maintains status quo a leader breaks new frontiers a true apostolic spirit is a groundbreaking spirit you cannot be under a ministry like this and then your thinking is still old Daniel 6, verse 2 to 3. Pace 
case setting mentality hallelujah this was the story of daniel look up please let's see the kind of mindset daniel had it's not just that he was called daniel he reigned over certain provinces the bible says and over these three presidents sorry i'm cutting from verse one of whom daniel was what please read it of whom daniel was first means a pace setter first means a leader surpassing ordinary standards he said that the princes might give accounts to them and the kings should have no damage verse 3 then this daniel was what everybody say pace setters this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes why because an excellent spirit was it because he was a christian because he possessed certain things that made him irresistible and the king thought to set him over what influence as a result of a pace setting mentality how many christians start their work and never dream of becoming the managers or the people at the highest echelons they don't care in fact they run away when they tell them they are considering you for promotion they say ah have a for what now have a god is it that you don't know what it's a demonic mentality whoever taught you that is it, it may be a sincere person but that's a doctrine of demons that keeps the church bad i love jesus when jesus showed up he broke status quo genesis 41 give us 33 then we move to 38 to 44 please very fast sorry we have to read these things because i want to press something in tonight genesis 41 give us verse 33 then we'll move to 38 down to 44. now look up please everyone this was the story of joseph now therefore this is joseph advising pharaoh now therefore look out for a man discreet and wise whoever qualifies whoever has that mentality give him this kind of influence set him over the land of egypt there is influence for the taking but there is a requirement who is that one man in egypt who has sustained a paradigm of thinking that can produce this result give us verse 38 hear what the king says in response and pharaoh said unto his servant can we find ah, yeah, 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 yeah. may that be your testimony that even your enemies will sit together and say let's tell ourselves the truth can we find a trailblazer that when the government wants to sow a seed as a government to a church they turn and say which which church is making impact that is consistent with the values of the government can we find such a one as this is a man of whom the spirit of god is we're reading down to 44 and pharaoh said unto joseph listen for as much as god has showed thee this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art watch how cheap influence becomes thou shalt do what i give you influence instantly thou shalt be over my house I hope you know pharaoh knew that joseph was not an egyptian there are certain levels of mentality you have that will veto your background all this issue of we don't accept people from this state they've not found an exceptional person that's why that's when you see them breaking the rule they will say this is the first time we're doing it say that's that i'm a i'm a first timer i have i have the spirit of breaking new grounds Thou shalt be over my house, and according to my word shall all thy word shall all the people be ruled. Can you imagine? That's a costly, that's a risk from Pharaoh. He says, Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over how many? All the land of Egypt. 
Do you think that's good for the kingdom? Do you think Joseph's father and brothers would have been allowed to come to Egypt if he didn't have influence? Are we together now? Can you see the advantages of his influence? His influence afforded him to say, where's my father? The same way when you have influence, you can look at somebody and say, you said you are looking for a job, please come. I know you. Your being in Koinonia has qualified you. Even if you don't know anything, I know you love God and you can listen. We have preached people. We have, we have destroyed opportunities for the church to rise. Because of mentalities that we think are good. The church is almost an endangered species compared to the world's global brand in terms of advancement. We are there smiling, throwing ourselves under the anointing and then the world is, is gaining, is squeezing the church into a mold. And one policy can just write us away. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of royalty, from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck 43 and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of egypt the last verse and pharaoh said to joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land shout influence say it again In our families there's nobody to speak for us when we are suffering we just call on god directly and god wants to answer but there is no envoy no human being that can partner with god to wipe our tears do you know it's a cause to have generations of people with no influential person in that family you hear people here say i'm the first person to go to school i'm the first person to get a job you know the danger every other person surrounds you like worms drawing from you you are any hundred thousand and there are 22 people waiting and hoping to receive their share of cake from you influence mm. leadership is the passion to excel when i talk of leadership i don't just mean ruling leadership in terms of excelling the passion to excel at an uncommon level i'm explaining to you what pace setting trailblazing global mentality is in one word is leadership the passion to excel at an uncommon level so as to gain access over that sphere listen the reason why you excel is so that you can rise to the highest level and then be able to gain access we need men and women who have access and i tell you koinonia hear me this is what you are becoming are we together now oh this is what you are becoming just give us time in the next few years in the next few years you know the way if somebody is walking and he says my name is Nas Dangote. Even if he's not related to Dangote, that name has already brought favor to his life. I trust God that Koinonia in the future will be, it, it will be like a, a signet ring of favor. I will never pastor and lead people who are failures. We just comfort ourselves. And No, no, no. A passion to excel you are in agriculture you are thinking how do I lead not Kai how do I get my small one mudu of beans me and my wife she's not even complaining you are not pace setting you are not trailblazing remember that if all you want to do is succeed you are carnal but if you want to succeed to gain influence and allow God come into that space you are an ambassador always attach a kingdom motivation to your pursuit and then there is no level of pursuit that will embarrass you i will never be small i hate it and it is for the kingdom number two the second key to kingdom influence 
is character. You want to command kingdom influence. In our generation today, you need character. Everybody say character. What is character? Christ-likeness. Moral uprightness. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 9 talks to us about sustaining kingdom character. Just write it down. We may not have time to look at it. Listen. Brothers and sisters, please look at me. If you want to be global, those outside, please pay attention. If you want to go far in business, in ministry, in your career, you have to curb a lot of excesses in your life. The Bible says, listen to me, the Bible says, um, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. All things are permissible, but not all things are necessary. On your journey to influence, there are weights. Some things are not necessarily sinful. They are just weights. Weights. Character, moral uprightness. From the way you speak, the way you dress, the way you behave, you want to be a leader, you are in a place they are sharing food. Ah, I have not got you. You are just stretching. You are not a leader. God cannot promote you to disgrace him like that. There is a decorum. There is a protocol for great people. I'm not just talking about pretending and, and living a fake and a false life. But you must be disciplined. You are dressing, you iron your clothes. You talk well. You see people, you greet them. You don't see somebody like our daddy here and say, ah, daddy, how are you, prof? You know, as if you are talking to, to yourself. No. Character. There are many people who do not have character. Moral uprightness. You see an elderly woman moving your mother, something you cannot help her pick up the load. No character. There's this wild nature that our generation of young people have that we must tame and cut away. We, we associate youthfulness to wildness. That means if you are temperate, people think you are too cold. Be wild. You won't be a leader that way. Look at how teachers, the teachers in our school, who teach our students. You see how they dress? You see how they talk? Now, I'm not against anything, but a young man comes, rings in his five hands. I'm not against all of those things, but you are not, it's not seen, but it's a weight. The students are watching you. The next day, they come with it too. You sag your jeans. A teacher, you see jeans with, um, um, uh, what they call it, all kinds of, there's this patch jeans that you see that exposes everywhere. I mean, there's nothing for the imagination. Believe me. If nobody has told you anything is wrong with it, Joshua Selman is saying it, write it, mark me. Something is wrong with that kind of thing. You won't go far with it. I'll preach, oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, there is a protocol to greatness. You must give up something to go up. You cannot... Go up with everything you wear with down. It's, it, you are down because a weight held you. If you are ready to move up, be ready to drop some things. Vulgar communications. Don't speak intelligently. Many of us today cannot construct a good letter, a proposal, because our vulgar speaking and communication has destroyed us. You are writing something to apply for a job. You are writing you as you. Four as letter four. You see that? I need a job from you. Thanks. And the manager looks at it and says, look at, look at all this nuisance to our company. We have labored to build ourselves and these people are coming to destroy us. See, our generation interprets modesty as weakness. When your life is temperate, you feel guilty for it. Because we live in a generation where you must be loud 
and wild to be thought of, those people will not last long. History is full of many of them. Prison cells are full of many of them. They created their own rules to life. Everybody say, I'll be a man of character. Say it, I'll be a man of character or a woman of character. Yes. Every bad wife was a bad human being. Every irresponsible father was an irresponsible human being. Every bad leader was a bad human being. You bring in your personality. You bring in your mindset. It doesn't just change when you become CEO. It's an attitude. Hallelujah. Moral uprightness. You are calm. Not the person moving around, gossiping about everybody, saying everything about everybody. No. Only cheap people do that. Only idle people do that. Hallelujah. There are rules for greatness. You ignore them, you will never be great. The level that God has brought us in ministry by the grace of God. You see all these people inside and outside. I honor God and I bless them. But never make a mistake. They didn't just come just because of the anointing. There are factors combined together. This is what I'm teaching you. See, let me tell you. People never become loyal to you until they probe your life and they are satisfied that you are worth being loyal to. Loyalty is not a gift. You earn it. Are we together? There are so many people who see, especially some of us young people, and they think the loyalty is just because of solidarity. No! Loyalty is a product of a track record. People probe your life and come to a point where they are satisfied with your convictions and they, they, are, they, are, they are comfortable that you are a leader worth submitting to. You don't command influence just because you think you are spiritual. Character. There are many pastors who don't have character. You just get up and go and disturb somebody's house early in the morning. Peace be unto this house. And pastor, so, 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 bam, 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 bam. Madam is there tea. You think it's a nice thing. They are marking you. You represent boredom to them. No character. Are you anointed? Yes. Will you last like that? No. That's how we inconvenience a lot of people. You now meet somebody and prophesy to the person and say, transfer 7,000 or 10,000 to my account. God keeps quiet and you think he was right. He was very wrong. It's just his mercy that overlooked it. There are pastors who do that. The moment they say, I want to pray for you, what they say is, I want money from you. Moment they pray for you, they just say, transfer 2,000 to my account so that he can activate the faith. There is a place for seed faith. But many of the things we do. That's why a young man right now is associated with the moment parents see certain people, even some of us young ministers, you go to pray in somebody's house and they are already suspecting. They are looking at you. You have to talk for five minutes for them to eat, to loosen up. And say, oh, this guy, this guy looks very cultured. Character. You get to somebody's house in five minutes, you have entered their kitchen. They are prime plantain, you carry one, you eat, you go out. They are watching you. There are some of us like this, I must talk to you. I want you to become something. And we must curb these things. Don't do that. Say, no, 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 we are free. They always allow me. No, see, let me tell you. Part of character is the ability to say no to some things that are even good. You must see. There are certain things that is like Esau. You are trading your birthright for it. There are times people have carried fat seeds and, and checks, something to give me. And the Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Because in their minds, they are feeling guilty. They are not just blessing me out of conviction. They just feel tall. This man of God has prayed. And you see them, I'm ready to go. And you see them pinching themselves, giving signs. And somebody will enter and they come out. And then I tell them, I say, no, 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 no. I receive it, I bless it, and I sow it back. And they say, ah, man of God, can we have your number, please? Honestly, you see that? You have earned loyalty because you have let them know that you, your convictions are greater than money. For some of us, 
you collect and count it and say, Abba, madam, you too. Abba, what is all this? How much is my transport from where I left? I did night vigil, deliverance, the money. You are dropping 10,000, you drop it on the table. Then I say, madam, add something. Are you fake? No, but you are a suspect. It's easy for people to think you went to collect power. Some of us, the way we dress, now please, um, don't, 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 don't feel bad. I'm, I'm just trying to work on you. I've seen men of God. Um, please, I'm not, uh, I wish I don't have to preach this, but I have to obey God. From your hairstyle, the way you look, you look like a thief. You look like, I mean, the way you are dressing. And even when you are talking, people are afraid. They are not at ease. Honestly, you may not be, you may be the nicest person available. But something about your lack of character and environment. You tell a lady I want to see you, she's shaking because she doesn't even know what can happen. No, come on. I want you to be on a project that you must be trusted. Be on a project. Be trustworthy. Not perfection, but you are sincere enough to be trustworthy. When people commit their loyalty to you, it's a trust. You don't disappoint it. How many pastors have dashed down the loyalty of people? Loyalty is a trust, brothers and sisters. So God is talking to some of us now who are careless with little, little things. You just sit down and send a text to four or five sisters. You make jollof rice for me. You, my birthday is coming by June. I want a suit. Sam, you buy uh, this and that there are men of god that do that i'm sorry if if you are in that category forgive me but it's wrong i cannot imagine myself coming now to tell heads of department all of you bring hundred hundred thousand my birthday is coming in june choir you bring bring buy me shoe uh, all the pastors <laughs> pastor femi and alpha and you who have congregation so you people you ah, ah. God didn't send you to be a burden to the people. Sometimes we do these things sincerely. But I'm telling you now, there is need for adjustment. Don't do that. See, bless the people and let them bless you based on their perception of who they think you are. They will surprise you. They will surprise you. There is nobody who will have a track record of transformation from your life who will not give back to you. Amen. Let's go to the next point. Some of you don't seem to like this point. The third key to strategic kingdom influence is excellence. Excellence. What is excellence? The quality of doing things well. The quality of doing things well. Write this down. The difference most times is not what you do, but how you do it. The difference, brothers and sisters, that makes you a great man of influence most times is not what you do, is how you do it. While I was babbing this, this evening, I was talking to my Baba and I was just telling him that, do you know that there are babbing saloons in Abuja that you will pay thousands of naira and the people are not as good as him, but you will pay because of how they do it. The clipper for babbing is different, for carving is different. There is really nothing there, it's just packaging. But because of that packaging, you will pay for it. He was telling me that the... I think it was Oga Jordan, he should be here. He went to Abuja or so, and then he went to Bab somewhere with his brother. And they paid 3,000. They gave them wine and chinchin. Is that what you cannot buy? How much is chinchin? 10 naira. How much is this Coke? This, this, this uh, heaven, pure heaven wine, 250. Add it together. You paid 3,000 and then you watch match. But listen, it's excellent. So you will be rewarded. When you are excellent, you name your price. You see that?
what you are doing now are you excellent in it please let me talk to us i salute i know many people in koinonia are engaged actively in all kinds of things but i want to challenge you are you excellent oh you make kunu you think he's small but are you excellent why don't you think of a way of doing it very well don't say kunu is not nice if you make it well i will buy it i think someone in the protocol he has um, some popcorn machines on campus and then i told him i said i want to taste your popcorn let me see what and what do you put there and he was telling me what he said all that one is stories bring it let me taste let me know whether you are excellent see let me tell you something the minimum standard in our world today is excellence even if you don't have the finance to grow into it have the mindset first so you have only one cloth and that one cloth will make it look as if you are not excellent you are because already you you've had an ideology of excellence you iron it you look smart it's not doing ministry that makes you excel it's how you do it it's not preaching that makes you excel it's how you preach it's not doing business that makes customers come to you it's how you do it it's not doing your job that makes you excel but how you do it exceptional people most times are not necessarily super skilled people they are just people who have been able to force their value to be recognized excellence say i'll be excellent say it again i'll be excellent number four give me a few minutes here and we'll pray open your spirit and your ears right now to what you're about to hear <clears throat> the fourth key in our day in the 21st century to strategic kingdom advancement is called results we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days we're on our way to better days on common results is one of the greatest key greatest keys to strategic kingdom influence john 15 verse 8 listen i will share with you certain things about results today that will make you go back to your life and you will insist that i must produce results john 15 verse 8 15 not 5 15 verse 8 okay hearing is my father glorified read on that ye bear fruit much fruit exceptional fruit notable result it says so by so doing you will prove that you have been following me diligently listen brothers and sisters our world today tribes on results pace setters influencers are those who command results remember my teaching commanding results i want you to pay attention right now write this down on common supernatural result is the end of all argument on common supernatural result is the end of all argument creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of god waiting for their manifestation i tell you i feel the anointing of the spirit as i'm talking about this something will happen something must happen to you tonight uncommon result is the end of all arguments write this down results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances results demonstrate dominion and control over obstacles limitations and circumstances 
Oh, hallelujah. I'm a believer in the word of God. Results. Listen, look at me. When you produce results in your life, it shows certain things. That you have authority. You have got the keys that commands authority. I told you that the fear of man is the inability to control situations and circumstances. There are a number of people that were brought here that are sick this night. That's, that's, that's a situation. That's a circumstance. You hear them say circumstances beyond our control. And whoever can bring it under control must command influence. Mark Zuckerberg wields tremendous influence because he was able to bring a particular dimension of science under control on common supernatural results are a sign that you truly have authority over circumstances part of the reasons why there are so many people inside and outside is because by the grace of god and with all humility to an extent god has been able to grace us to show that we have sustained certain keys to command consistent control and dominion over certain aspects of life i was in kaduna when we ministered and we were in the restaurant together um, with my people we were just trying to eat have a meal before we rush and come back to zaria and while we're there just trying to order a meal a woman looks at me and um ah the woman was looking at me and now i, I started feeling embarrassed i said madam do i know you? she said you are pastor joshua i said yes she said ah well done sir and i looked i said ah, madam how are we you know i was playing with her little boy and i said where do i know you and the woman just nodded she said she was going to tell me a little story and she said i came for counseling two years ago looking as wretched as anything a single mom with a child no hope for marriage finances crashing everything being destroyed and you prayed for me and you prophesied you told me that they were going to call me back to the job and they would send me to the marketing department and i should go there say man of god that's exactly what happened they sent me to the marketing department and i was i was sad and she did her hand like this i saw a ring she said two months ago i got married even with the child she pointed outside and i saw a clean black e-class she said will you believe that i will be the owner of this brothers and sisters say results one result will end every kind of argument every kind is god speaking to us results pastors produce results produce results you know why our prayer department by the grace of god is like it's like second koinonia it's like midweek service of koinonia for many people because of results they are praying and they are seeing results nobody will come and spend two three hours here just like that people are not idiots results by the time your life listen i don't care how much you pray or fast if there is no result you'll be frustrated the end of your work with god is that god ah, you come to a point where you become so full of the anointing of the spirit you can produce a common result fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over fill me up until i overflow i want to run over i want to run over sing one time fill me up till i overflow i want to run
must have a passion. I'd like you to look at every area of your life and be tired of being barren of results. You are a pastor, no results, no healings, no miracles, no salvation, no transformation. And you explain away and say, it's because I'm telling the truth. People are not coming. All those things are flimsy excuses. Results. When a family that is barren comes and there is a miracle, that's results. There are some results you cannot argue with. No. No. You're a businessman. Don't worry that people don't believe in you. My brother, produce results and you will close the mouth of any and everybody. Even if all you are doing is parking soccer away, just produce results. Let me tell you something. It's frustrating to make noise about things you don't have results to show. Because your results are supposed to be your noise in the school of greatness. Not your words. I can do this. I am this and that. No! I can pray. Where is the fruit of the prayer? I can fast. Where is the fruit of the fasting? I am warded. Where is it? Results. You want to command influence in our world today. You need results. You need results. This is the apex of this teaching tonight. You need results. Supernatural results. Write the following things about results. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Results are a product of correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Let me show you a scripture that would probably really, really surprise you. Kabbalah Kora Subariyatara. Give us Matthew 14, please. Let's look at it. Matthew 14. Shabaratu Zedebalakaria. Ombrida Subre Hashina Malia Karatus Kobrea. Matthew 14. We'll read from verse 23. And. Um, We'll read down to the end. Let's hurry up. And when he had sent the multitudes away, everybody watch this. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Rush, media, just continue. But the sheep was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. There was a situation those in the sheep could not control. Next verse. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, Doing what? Brothers and sisters, the same water, the same water was responding differently to Jesus. The same water. You know why? Because Jesus was operating on certain principles. Are we together now? Next verse. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit. Notable results. And they cried out for fear. There is a kind of result that will not only make people celebrate you, they will be afraid. That one will move beyond the realm. I watch some of you as you are sitting down and the power of God begins to break out. I see everybody looking around and you are just trying to adjust, trying to show like I'm, I'm okay, I'm not afraid. There are certain results that can happen in your life. It will make the heart of men fear. But straightway Jesus spake to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I. He said, be not afraid, verse 28. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 29. Hmm. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the water, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. 30. This is my verse of emphasis. But when he saw the wind boys terrors, he was afraid and began to sing. And he cried saying, Lord, save me. Look at this. Two people are standing on water. One is sinking. The other one is standing. Was it the water? Never the water. Same Nigeria. Same economy. Same dollar rise. Same everything. Are we together now? Same harshness in ministry. 
Same being in the north where they say people are persecuted. But then you sustain a mystery. Jesus was standing. And when Peter cried, he lifted Peter and Peter stood just like him. Meaning you can bring people to your experience. Listen. There was something Jesus knew that made that water treat him that way. There is something you do not know that is making your life turn around. Someone is walking through it like this. Life is responding to people in different ways on the strength of the laws they have kept. Please hear me. Correct understanding and application of laws and principles. Number two, results are a product of mastery. 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 Exceptional competence. You have mastered the laws that produce them so thorough that you do it unconsciously. That's the kind of attitude that produces results. Number three, results are a product of diligence. There are many times you keep knocking on the door of destiny until it opens. Sometimes you may knock for many years, but you continue. Diligence and persistence. Is what separates men from boys. Diligence. Number four. And I want you to leave this. Take home this one tonight. Results are a product of the presence of the anointing. Ah, The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When results become supernatural and consistent, then there's no limit to the influence of the person producing it. When results become notable and consistent, listen, listen, if you produce results for a short time, it will not create the effect. It needs to be consistent. That's why you find out that God can be using a particular man of God or a church. He can continue for many years and then one day, it's like he hits a breaking point in the spirit. In one year, he will step into a dimension of increase. Consistency. Consistency. I was watching a video of Steve's Joe. Late Steve's Joe. Apple founder. 1991. 1991. He was talking to their team of executives. And if you hear that guy's idea, as at 91, everything he was saying they would do, they did. Men who produce results. Brothers and sisters, if you're part of this ministry, you must produce results. Not just receive results, produce results. In every area. Hallelujah. When our sister came up and said she got five points, I laughed. But I was impressed with her. But I'm not impressed enough until we find 20 people in a row. That's notable enough. That's the type we can clap with and smile. Set your standards so high. Even when they are clapping for you, you are still pressing to move higher. If you set your standard too low, you will hit it easily. That's what mediocrity is. Setting low standards. I like her. She said four point something. When she hit it, she set another one. You must set a very high standard. There is such a high standard that I put in ministry. That's why I don't compete. Because the standard alone, I keep competing against that standard. It's enough to engage me. Hallelujah. I want to get to a point where I will be so full of the Holy Ghost so full of the anointing of his spirit i'm telling you you don't have to start praying for people it doesn't matter what you are talking about they will pay to get your presence in a place even if it's just to sit down they know they will never be the same fill me up till i overflow i want to run over I want to run over Please fill me up Till I overflow I want to run over 
Listen, let me challenge you, everybody here. Create a system that measures your growth. Don't mark your script by yourself and score yourself A and organize speech and price for yourself. You are a mediocre when you do that. Challenge your standard. Don't do small things and rejoice over it. Let me tell you something. The key to mediocrity is finding one person you are better than and settling down because of that. As a pastor, I'm better than this guy. As a great, I'm better than this guy. Those kind of people will never be my friends. Those who come around and start telling you who they are better than, no. Because they are the type who will fight anybody that rises. I, I'm not a product of all those kinds of things. There is enough, the assignment, the demand of the assignment is enough. You compete against the standard God has given you. There is a benchmark. Those who are men of God today were ushers in the Bible. Welfare personnel. Look at the condition to be in welfare. Full of the Holy Ghost. Welfare. To serve food. You needed to serve food with the anointing. So we are constantly moving. Thank God for what God is doing through the school of ministry. But we are rising. Thank God for what God is doing through our messages and the media ministry. But we are rising. The result is too small. The result is not yet notable enough. I tell you, compared to where we are going, this is child's play. We've not started anything. The level of excellence is still at its foundation. Foundation. We have not even done anything. That's how you challenge yourself. Don't sit down with your small business and come back with 5,000 and you are laughing and say, Kai, it's better than nothing. Be happy for where you are, but never want to remain there. Oh, what do you do? I'm into interior decor. Are you a see? Let me tell you something. Anything you are not competent in, just keep quiet about it. Talking about it will be disgracing yourself. There are so many people around. Ask them, what do you do? They say, I'm into interior decor. Really? Like who? Like what? How much can I pay you? Is there something you can do to me that will make me need you even if I don't like you? You have a restaurant. Can we eat in your restaurant? If we have a guest coming, can we take the guest to your restaurant and be comfortable? I have a church. Can I come to your church and sit down? And be sure that God will bless me. Oh, I'm a driver. Like who? Where do you know? Challenge yourself. Don't mark yourself and say I'm good. There are many talented people inside and outside. Somebody wrote one song and came and sang it for me. I said, my brother, please go and work on it. God is helping you. Don't produce anything from this. Go and work on it. It's obvious you, I can show you at least five rules of music you broke on this. I told them, who is your role model? Who is your inspiration? They say, he mentioned expensive names as if it's just to talk. I said, how many of their videos do you have? Not their videos of the album they produce. Have you watched their stage rehearsals? Have you gone out of your way to find out how they rehearse? Listen. You don't learn from a man by watching his real life performance. You watch from a man by learning how he builds. You don't learn from Usain Bolt by seeing how he runs. No! You see how he rehearses. You don't learn from a man of God by just seeing how he displays the anointing. You learn the mystery of his secret place. Koinonia, I'm challenging you. God is taking us far. There are many of us here who would have entered certain levels of influence. Opportunities came and passed us by, is still passing us by because we have not mastered that key that will give us influence. There are so many people in this place, you are in business, you are the only one who knows you are in business because your products, you don't know nothing about business, you will not sit down and learn, you will not grow, everybody will be, what are you doing? I'm into real estate. What are you doing? I'm a CEO, CEO of nothing. There's no result. Sit down and learn. Many young people moving around with suit and Bible and, and iPad. What are you? I'm a pastor. My name is Pastor, Pastor David Revelation or David King or something. That's not what will give you open the doors of ministry. Let me tell you something. God knows as a person, 
I am more than willing to invest into the life of anybody that is serious and ready to rise up. Believe me. Anything you are doing, if it's not of standard, you see, and you don't get standard by default, you learn. Learn from the best. Don't learn from your colleagues. Your colleagues are your colleagues because something made you the same way. You rise up. You learn. Something you do not know is the reason why your life is limited. Something you know but have refused to believe is making you stay. God has given me access, uncommon access to people and sometimes I look at where I am and it's like a dream. I'm saying, Joshua Selman, what are you looking for in this place? Influence. Influence. Whenever you see a man of influence, don't be angry. It's not a mistake. Results, brothers and sisters. I'm the firstborn in my family, but the way they are even treating me, I can't even talk. Result, result, result. Everybody say result. Produce result and you will switch the button. I'm 20 years, I'm 30 years. They are still treating me like a child. Result. Prove them wrong. Produce results. Don't make noise. I'm obsessed about studying successful people. I'm not ashamed. I, I have an appetite to confront my ignorance. I confront it with joy and gladness. I confront my ignorance with, with no sense of embarrassment at all. I like knowing what I don't know anything about. When I discover things in my life, I say, ah, this is what I didn't know. I go for that knowledge. I want you to produce results. The little level God has brought this ministry is as a result of the results. The level of organization at the little level we are in, there is a formula to it. It's not just happening by mistake. That you come and as many as we are, there is still some level of organization. You don't guess, you learn. What you see today is what we knew yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal what we have known today. Please, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. If you want to command influence, influence has monetary value. People will pay you and bless you in a way that will bring tears out of your eyes and you will say lord what what is this what are you doing to me for if the cloud be full of rain the bible says they empty themselves upon the earth men of god god is challenging us tonight stop being a mediocre surround yourself with three or four friends and say among all of them i'm the one who prays most that's nonsense mediocrity I'm the one who has revelation more. Mediocrity. Somebody writes jam and gets 120 and his friend gets 80 and he turns and says, Kai, but I gap you by how many points? Let's count. No, I'm not, I'm not mocking. It's, it's not a mockery. I'm using it as an example. Don't feel bad if you didn't make it for jam. In fact, I, I hear they are going to write it. We'll pray for them at the end of the service. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I know that this teaching is touching some of you. There are people who are seated right now. You can pretend like what I'm saying is not serious. There are many people standing outside right to the back. Some of them are just standing and thinking about their lives. I want to excel in my life. And I want my excellence to be intentional. Set a high standard, Koinonia. Set a high standard challenge yourself when God gives you that influence men will thank you for being influential your children will thank you I was sharing with the school of ministry students some of the things I do today is no longer for myself if it's for myself I will stop doing some things because I've already created a system that will bless myself I've started thinking transgenerational both spiritual and physical not just physical children that anybody connected to me will be implicated for success just by being associated and lot went with abraham 
the secret place of Abraham implicated Lot until he was blessed. Who gets blessed following you? Or are you the type parents who warn their children about and say, don't follow this, this bad boy, he's going to spoil your life. Please, Koinonia, hear the voice of the Spirit tonight. It's time to settle down. Myself, settle down. And produce results. Stop guessing over your destiny. Prosperity is a reaction. It's not dash. Advancement in ministry is a reaction. We have never, never said we'll raise a second offering in this ministry. Say, oh, we cannot pay for bus or we cannot do this. No, it has never happened and it will never happen in the name of Jesus. But it's, it's a formula. It's a formula. We don't have to manipulate you and squeeze your hand. It's a formula. Find out what the formula is. Don't just enjoy and say, Kai, this is a rich ministry. Find out what is the formula. What is the secret of the anointing of the Spirit upon our lives and the ministry? Find out. Do you care to find out? Are you humble enough to find out? I always look at the people that are close to me and I always watch out for their interest in finding out process or results. When I look at people who are close to me, I like to know what their passions are. If you are close to a man of God, there are pastors here, be careful because proximity can destroy your ability to learn. You are always seeing the result. Some of you come for Koinonia and you can sit down here and in the next five minutes, people are flying all over and just say, Kai Apostle is anointed. Do you know it is for the taking? Peter said, help me. And Jesus said, I can show you. Let me teach you what I'm doing that is making me standing. He lifted him. There is something you can learn. There is the secret of the war. There is a mystery you can learn. You can stand upon it. It's not abracadabra. It's not the more you see, the less you understand. The prophetic has a formula. The apostolic ministry has a formula. Don't guess in pride. Learn. Those who learn are the ones who rise. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray and I want everyone to please pray. Make sure you always don't miss the time of prayer here. Every time we share truths like this, we must take our time to pray. Lift your hands and give God praise for this word you have heard. It will change your life. I will rise in your name, Adonai. You reign on high. I will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on high. One more time. Lord, I will rise in your name. I'd like you to lift your voice and shout it like your destiny depends on it. Say in the name of Jesus. Today, I decree that I must produce results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Results, oh God. Rekete koto shekete. Embra kata lava kata. Shekete kereto kore baba Mandela Karia Dabasha, a cross Kabaria Daba, Era Dabaria Daba, Shegere Bararara, yeah. In your name, we will rise. Adonai, the rain of God. Results, results. Pay attention to produce results. I pay attention. Results at the end of every argument. Results. The product of mastery. Results. The product of diligence. Results. The product of consistency.
Abaratos Calabaria da Basseverga. Alleluia. Alleluia. Say after me in the name of Jesus. From today, I pay attention to laws, principles, and mysteries. I pay attention to the laws I need to know to excel. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace, oh God. I'm tired of poverty and suffering. I need to hold on to the laws. I'm tired of defeat and failure. I'm tired of everybody hating me. Everybody fighting me. There is something I need to know. Lord, show me the laws I'm violating. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like you to mention every area of your life where you have not seen notable result and say every pride every attitude stopping me from being humble to learn and produce results in that area i take authority over you right now open your mouth and pray mention the area naaman was a captain of the syrian army but 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 there was an area in his life please pray are you praying say lord i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself i humble myself to learn i humble myself to master the art of war Aparatoko seke de belerebos, lekate pras kata baladaba, impra parado soto pregedeba. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Before we have that prayer point, I want to make an altar call. Please, I want you to be serious tonight. We are not joking. Tonight is a very serious night. There are people here, inside and outside, from the beginning of my talk here. The word of God had come to you like, like a hammer. You know that you have mismanaged your life. And you are seeking an opportunity to say, look, man of God, I've been looking for somebody to lead me to Christ. Tonight, right now, I'm going to make that altar call. Two kinds of people, please. There are many people outside. I know the Lord is showing me. There are people inside here. You are saying, man of God. I have managed my life by myself and the truth is I have mismanaged it but God is giving me a new beginning and I want to take advantage of it you've never committed your heart to the Lord or you have done what you think you know to be Christianity but with respect to what God is doing now you know that you are not making any progress please these two categories of people I count one to five or not one to five as we are praying make your way to the front right now make your way to the front while they come out the remaining of us please lift your voice and pray and say father use me use me use me do business with me oh god lift your voice and pray please make sure you don't sit back as the holy ghost is speaking to you this is your moment of change this is your moment of change Don't let any friend or the family you came with make you sit back outside. No matter how far, make your way. Make your way to the front. Use me, oh God. He said, thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe, my weapon of war. Thou art my battle axe. 
Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. Listen, those of you standing here, I am very happy for you for this decision. Don't let anybody make you think you are wasting your time. There are some of us, you have destroyed your life with liquor, smoking, drinking, all kinds of things. Giving yourself to any and everybody. There is a new beginning. God wants to rehabilitate your life. You heard the story of this gentleman. There are still people like that. You know, I don't care whether you think you're a Christian or not. Alcohol, smoking, drinking, all kinds of things is destroying you. Please leave your seat and come and join them as I lead you to Jesus Christ. Leave your seat and come and join them. Even if everybody knows you in your area, it's time to make a change. It's time for a new beginning. Hallelujah. All of you here, some of you are giving your heart to Christ for the first time. Some of you are making up your mind to be serious with God. You are welcome. Please lift your hands. And I want you to pray with me. Just one hand, your right hand. I want you to mean business. Please, if you know you are not going to be serious, go back to your seat. If you are here, be serious. You are not reciting a poem. Be very serious from the depth of your heart. No pinching, no laughing around. You are serious while we God here. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me this night I surrender my life I surrender my destiny to you I'm tired of wasting my life take over my life from this night I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that I will never be the same the power of sin is broken over my life in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted father I break the power of sin over everyone lifting their hands here every habit and every demon and every power that is tying anyone's destiny down I lose you tonight in the name of Jesus every addiction everything that is not of god it dies and leaves you forever this night i'm praying for you from tonight you are stepping into a new dimension it will be from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen thank you so much i'd like you to follow a brother waving his hands please we need your details because we need to follow you up it's not enough for you to just give your life to christ we need to follow you up so please you have the details and um, they will guide you and give you more information celebrate them as they go all of you this way follow the gentleman celebrate them coin on your celebration